<laughs> uh, you never know. It depends what happens. A lot of it depends on night, the uh, type of week of practice you had, the, uh, uh, just how, how much community we have going with us and what, and what the other team's doing. I mean, we were able to match up favorably against uh, the last two defenses. We've never scored a lot of points against this team, so that's a, kind of a challenge. Now, what we noticed last week is you teamed up Grimes with Wyatt, and you went with them a good part of the game, which was different than the previous week where you were alternating a lot. What are we going to see tonight? Uh, well, we're going to see a couple new little formations coming in there. We'll have three backs in the backfield for the first time. Okay. Uh, we'll split, split our ends out, and we'll do some things out of that, and then we'll go probably with Sakeem, and we'll also show a regular, regular eye. And, uh, all three of those backs we'll see a lot of time. Now, going back to the last Albany game, you came away with a win, but it was a low-scoring affair. What did you learn? What did you take out of that game that's going to affect tonight's game? You got to catch the ball and not turn the ball over. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty simple, Coach, but I know it won't be. Best of luck here tonight, Coach. Thanks very much. Take care. Associate Head Coach Pete Quackenbush. Pete, you got to be very pleased with the defense, especially over these last three outings in the Empire League. Well, Bill, we've done well, but, uh, you know, you're only as good as uh, your last play, and... Uh, that's all behind us. We can't we can't rely on anything that we've done in the past. We just have to uh, forge ahead and uh, try to put it to these guys tonight. Uh, advantage having played them before or disadvantage on defense? Oh, I, th I think it's an advantage. Definitely, definitely advantage. We know uh, we know the big gun is uh, Sly uh, Cooperwood. I mean, he's a, he's a talented back. Uh, we're going to try to uh, we're going to try to stop him tonight or contain him, I should say, because I don't know if we can stop him. Um, He's a talent, without a doubt. He's a talent. Um, passing, their their uh, quarterback is very adequate, and they have good receivers. We also have to contain number six on the uh, on their special teams. He ran all over us. Uh, any uh, any injuries or changes we should know about on D? Uh, John Rowan will not be with us tonight. No, he will not. Jamie Longmire fill in at the uh, in the middle, and uh, Brian Northern's going to be playing the weak side. Uh, for uh, Jamie. Well, Jamie moving over is not too bad at all, and, and Brian's been having a heck of a year. Brian, Brian's having a great year. Brian can fill in for me anywhere uh, along the defensive front or at linebacker. He's got good speed. He's got uh, real nice athleticism, and he just really gets pumped up to these games. Ladies and gentlemen, the terror of the Yankee Conference, Pete Quackenbush. Good game, Coach. All right, so folks, this is an away game for the Green Jackets, but uh, the Green Jackets chain gang has made the trip down here helping out Albany. When did you know that this was going to occur? Last Saturday, the home game. Did you? One of the players said, so why don't you guys come down? We don't have a chain crew. So we said, yeah, we'll be down. Well, first of all, it's an honor and a great opportunity, right? That is. I enjoy it. Have you been to Bleeka before? No, first time. First time. First time, nice field. Well, uh, we're glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here, too. <laughs> good. good luck. Have a good game. Thanks. So. Fall in the air. Blinker Stadium, Albany, New York. Bill Callahan along with Chris Drennan. Green Jackets football, a pivotal game of the season. Chris, how are you? I'm doing good, Bill. How are you today? I'm excellent, thank you. Boy, I'll tell you, 4-0, the Green Jackets coming into tonight's game. In an eight-game league schedule, they have a chance right now to at least tie for second place with a win here tonight, no matter what happens. Yeah, and it's, it's a key game for the Green Jackets. Pivotal. Um, you're right, you are about tied, and, uh, you know, this is a key game for them. 4-0 in league. Uh, the uh, the Albany, Albany team, the uh, Capitoline Thunder, they're uh, coming out for 1-3 so far this season in league play. Uh, they're both at different points in their in the, in the road, so to speak, for each other. A tale of two very different teams, actually. We've got one team, a team in the Green Jackets, who are a very disciplined, probably the best coached team in the league, in the Empire Football League. And then you've got the uh, Capitoline Thunder, who have always kind of played uh, sort of a, uh, a renegade rogue style, if you will, which sort of plays into their, to their favor. And what they try to do with opposing teams, particularly at home, is get them to play their game, which is a very um, off-the-cuff, and they try to uh, get in the in the heads of the opposing team. I expect to see that tonight, and the Green Jackets are going to have to do everything they can to uh, maintain their composure. Green Jackets, of course, uh, it, with a win tonight, if that's possible, walk away with a 5-0 and league record. They have not won in Bleecker Stadium in many a year. Uh, they have the week off next week, which is Labor Day weekend, a chance to rest up, then a tough road game at Orange County, followed by another week off, then a home game against St. Lawrence Valley, which is a probable win, 
and then a tough road game against Scranton. Now, Scranton is up and has the place loaded for its last game of the season, and Glens Falls does not travel well, the Green Jackets, then that could be a very close game. That's why this one is so critical coming up with Orange County and Scranton on the road. Definitely, and always critical when you take a road trip. Of, uh, of course, this is a very short road trip for the Green Jackets, but a road trip nonetheless. And then you've got a team like the Capulet Thunder who have always seemed to, uh, no matter what it looked like on paper, you can throw all that out the window. When these two teams come together, anything can happen. Fireworks usually happen, sparks fly, and then in the end, usually there's a surprise or some kind of twist throughout the game. And uh, like I said, either team can win no matter what or who is the favorite. Let's take a quick look at our sponsors, Chris, here in pregame before we get ready for the kickoff. All footballs at home this season are sponsored by the Pro and Mo Sports Shop, your preferred supplier of awards, plaques, and trophies for 27 years, located at 151 Broadway in Fort Edward. And tonight, the wide receivers and tight ends are sponsored by McCann's Pharmacy, your hometown full-service pharmacy, on the park, in Hudson Falls, free delivery, seven days a week. The Green Jackets running backs are sponsored by Luis's Italian Bistro, Homemade Italian favorites, great food, great prices. Located in South Glens Falls, telephone number 745-5055. And quarterback for this evening's matchup is sponsored by the Post Star, reaching 100,000 readers every day from the Capital District to the Adirondacks. And the offensive line of the Green Jackets, sponsored by Axis Technologies and Luzerne Webworks. Everything you need for computers in your business, helping you help yourself. The telephone number 654-5444. And the linebackers tonight, sponsored by the UPS Store. Mailboxes, etc. is now the UPS store in the Hannaford Plaza at 175 Broad Street in Glens Falls. And, of course, we're here at Bleecker Stadium. We're getting ready for the kickoff. The green jackets wearing the green pants with the white jerseys and, of course, the gold helmets. And taking a look right now at the Capital Land Thunder here of Albany, black and gold. And uh, they look pretty tough. Again, the rumored uh, change of name uh, is almost no longer a rumor. Looks like uh, Albany will be back next year and will be called the Albany Metro Maulers. And it will be great to have that traditional name back instead of the Capital Land Thunder, which was a good try on the marketing side. But the uh, Metro Maulers has such a good name around here, uh, just like the Firebirds, your team, right, Chris, right. that uh, it will be great to have them back. Well, indeed, a name like the Metro Maulers has such a history, and there's name recognition there, and a rich tradition, a history of, of a very, very good teams in the past. So I think this, the switch back to the Metro Maulers will give them some instant credibility and bring back maybe some of the glory days of past Metro Maulers team. We, uh, of course, heard from Coach Pete Quackenbush that John Rowan is not at the game tonight. Jamie Longmare is moving over to John's position, and Brian Northern has a starting role in A.Z. Longmire's position. So that is the change on defense. Not really expecting anything different on offense. Of course, the offense has worked beautifully the last three games. So the Green Jackets are going to be kicking off. Looks like number six, Vinny C., going to be doing the kickoff chores at least in the beginning for the Green Jackets here at Bleecker. This, of course, was a reservoir located in the center of Albany until the Depression hit, and the stadium was built as a WPA project and has been the home of, of semi-pro baseball, football, and many others for years. Vinny's kick is a nice one. Taken all the way at the 10, 15, stay up the middle of the 20, 25, across the 30, going right, 35. Nice job, nice run back. Squash back at about the 32, carrying the ball number one, Jeff Thurman. And that was a good run by Jeff to get them good field position to start this game off. Jackets making a gang tackle. Jackets are on defense. I don't think that that's a position that they mind being in at all. They'd like to make a statement right here and stop them on this first possession, turn the ball over to the Jackets and see if they can draw first blood and get up 7 to nothing. Definitely. Remember uh, the last game between these two teams. The Green Jackets coming away with a 17-13 win. We do not expect this to be an explosive game offensively. Of course, uh, Sylvester Cooperwood, who has played for the Green Jackets in postseason play, he's wearing number four today, number four, and expected to see a lot of the action at running back. Although, just as I say that, I don't see him out there. But then again, we probably will see him quite a bit today. Here we go. I was just going to say the Metro Maulers with the ball, the Thunder with the ball, first and 10 at the 35. Man in motion. Nice handoff. Still motoring across the 40. Looks like just about to the first down area. Number six, Clinton. Nice job. And that was a very, very hard tackle there by Gabe Young on Clinton as he turned the corner. Now what we're seeing right now was a little misdirection there as he tried to get the corner on the Jackets. We've seen that in the past. If there had been any success over the past few weeks by any team in the running game, it's been getting around the corner and uh, getting some yards uh, on, on in rounds and sweeps. And uh, once again, that was evidence right there for a first down. The Jackets did a good job in correcting that uh, in past games and sealing the end, but uh, right there, that was uh, an example right there of what has happened to them in the past as far as getting around the corner. Agreed. Manny Isaac 
is the starting quarterback wearing number 12 for the Capital Land Thunder. We have no score early here in the first quarter, 13.55 remaining. Bill Callahan and Chris Drennan with Green Jackets football. Keeping it from the shotgun, keeping it on the ground, pitching the ball out. Number 25, Damon Walker, he's still got it. There's a flag on the play. Damon Walker running in for a touchdown. Let's see if that holds. Yeah, we'll have to see if that holds preliminary celebration from the Jackets, but we'll see. They look like they're uh, signaling it back here at about the 30-yard line. But uh, once again, we saw Damon Walker and the Green Jackets defense who are very offensive-minded as far as attacking. And that was another case of Damon Walker with his blitz trying to stir things up in the backfield, and he did. And the officials pick up the flag and wave it off. The touchdown stands. It's six to nothing. Green Jackets, what a way to start off. Oh, what, a, what an excellent way for the Green Jackets to start off. Of course, once again, any team, any team that actually has a, has a hope of winning a championship is generally in the positive and the giveaway takeaways. Right there, the Jackets are up one. Positive, positive, plus one in the giveaway takeaways results as a touchdown. If they can maintain that positive in the giveaway takeaways throughout the season, they're going to come out as a league champion, I believe. Well, the Green Jackets defense has been absolutely awesome as you witness the scores of really the last four games, if you include Long Island, only giving up seven or three points respectively in each of those contests. Plus, the defense has contributed on the scoreboard as they do right now. Six to nothing right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, number 10. Bagstad coming in to do the kicking and the point after. He'll be switching off with Vinny C, number six. Uh, it looks like one half uh, with point afters and field goals by Bagstad, one half by Vinny, and then, of course, alternating on the other side with kickoffs. Little change here in personnel by the Thunder, and we're just about ready to go. Nice breeze blowing here. Like I said, a real touch of fall in the evening, and uh, that's expected. Usually right around Travers weekend, you begin to find fall here in the Albany area just a little ahead of my previous home in Connecticut. Snaps down, kicks up, and uh, yeah, it's good. Hard to get used to these goalposts in this angle, but we will. Seven to nothing is the score. Green Jackets off to a very, very quick start, and that's the way they want to do it. Well, that's exactly what they wanted to do. They love to strike first, especially when they're on the road against a team that's uh, as, as uh, dangerous as the Capitoland Thunder is. Of course, the defense, as we've seen in past weeks, have always been good for at least one touchdown do a very good job of helping the offense out. And once again, it was evidence right there. Great job by Damon Walker to come through there on that blitz and actually cause, wreak some havoc in the backfield, scoop that ball up and rumble all the way in for the, for the touchdown. Uh, you know, excellent, excellent uh, defensive play call by Coach Pete Quackenbush. Coach Quackenbush and Coach Mayer, of course, sharing the head coaching duties. Quackenbush on defense, Mayer on offense. They work so well together. This, uh, this team concept uh, doesn't work everywhere, but it's worked for the Green Jackets this year. And for you history buffs up in the Glens Falls area, remember that first Calder Cup in the American Hockey League with the Red Wings. It was uh, J.P. LeBlanc and Tommy Webster sharing the chores, and that worked. So, uh, hey, maybe, maybe we're getting a little premature. There might be a title in the offing this year. We'll have to see. Vinny doing the kicking off again for the Jackets. Kicks up. He's got the wind behind him. That takes the one all the way back into the goal line, touch back, and it'll bring it out to about the 20-yard line where it'll be first and 10, Capital Land. Right, Bill, and speaking about the wind uh, at his back, if there is any wind advantage tonight, it is going from our left to right, which is the way that the kickoff went. I would say it's roughly at about, and I'm no weather, <laughs> yeah, I'm no weather, weather forecaster, but I would say it's roughly in the 10 to 15 mile per hour range gusting, but uh, it is maintaining a left to right, uh, a wind blow from the left to right, so when they're going the opposite way, it is going to shorten the field goal attempt, and it is going to make some, wreak some havoc for the punters as well as the kickoff men. Well said. Chad Gamash, number 15, is out there as well. Chad was missing the last couple of games due to an injury. Great to see him out there, so that helps offset the loss of John Rowan a little bit, although be at a different position. Here we go, first and 10 for Capital Land, taking it from the shotgun at the 20-yard line. 7 to nothing to score, 13-43 in the first quarter. Screen pass to number six, and he slips and falls. Good follow-up there. Oops, still on the round. Gamash was involved in the follow-up. But, uh, yeah, you got a few people in the back here. He kind of shouted encouragement to the Capital Land Thunder. Makes it second down and about 15 to go. Yeah, loss of about five yards on that play. And once again, we saw Damon Walker on the right side with a blitz there trying to uh, get into the backfield. The, the uh, Thunder actually trying to combat that with a quick screen out to the left side. Nothing happening. Gamash was all over that. And well as the green and the green jackets pursuit on defense covered him as well and uh, resulted in a five-yard loss for the thunder manny isaac gets his instructions from his coach comes out to the huddle calls the play and capital land comes out in a tough second and 15 situation ball located right inside the 15-yard line 1256 remaining here at blinker stadium in albany new york bill callahan along with chris drennan in green jackets football 
Here we go. Keeping it on the ground. Smart way. Cooper Wood with the ball this time. Back up to the original uh, first down line of scrimmage area. So it's going to be third down and 10. Definite passing situation coming up here. Once again, Damon Walker getting up there. And he was the one that was able to trip up the running back on that play. Damon's been very active in this game thus far, resulting in the touchdown for Damon. And he's, been made, he's already made a few tackles. So Damon's uh, on top of his game thus far this evening. Other games in the Empire Football League tonight. Scranton is at Ottawa against Montreal. Playing it in the afternoon because there was a state of emergency up until today in Canada because of the power outage from last week, believe it or not. They were not allowed to play a game tonight until today. So they were hopefully starting that at 5 o'clock. In fact, that one might be in the books already. Isaac back. First pass. Actually, second pass. There was a screen before. He's got his man. Still on his feet. All the way up, almost to midfield. Calls first and 10 at about the 49 and a half yard line. Big break for Capital Land. That's what they're going to have to do, mix things up. Good job of the Capital Land receiver there to recognize where the first down marker was and break his route off right just, uh, just ahead of that first down marker. Then, of course, after the catch, he was able to elude the tackler, shake a tackle, and gain some extra yards for the first down for the Thunder. St. Lawrence Valley's at Watertown. That's going to be a tough one for the Trailblazers tonight. And let's see, Lake City at Green Mountain at Lake City. Yes, that's correct, ladies and gentlemen. The Lake City at Green Mountain game was moved to Lake City due to a light problem there. So that's being played up at Bailey Avenue as we speak. Of course, Glens Falls at Albany. Uh, of course, our friends down in Orange County have the weekend off. They were going to play at Long Island, but Long Island folded. So uh, they're resting up today. Man in motion, keeping it on the ground. Cooper Wood with the ball. Cooper Wood's trying to find room. He is squished at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second down and actually 10 and a half. Yeah, it was another attempt by the Capitoline Thunder there to try to get the Jackets to over-pursue on the left as they misdirected from the left and then gave it back to the right. But uh, nothing happened there. The Jackets recognized that, sniffed it out, and shut it down right away. Brings up a second in Longville. If the playoffs were held right now before we had tonight's results, it would be number three, Capital Land, traveling to number two, Orange County, Glens Falls with a week off, and then the winner going to Glens Falls for the Southern Division Championship game. In the north, it would be Watertown winning the division regular season. And it would be Montreal traveling to Lake City, the winner of that going to Watertown, and then, of course, the championship game being played at the winner of the North this year. So uh, there'll be some changes, though. But at least the front runners there will probably remain the same. Chris Brownell and his crew doing the officiating chores again tonight in this game. And, of course, as we pointed out in pregame, it is the Green Jackets chain crew doing the work here at Bleecker Stadium tonight. Very unusual, but it shows the... the, the, the I don't know, the cooperation between Empire Football League teams. Very nice. Here we go. Second down and 11 yards to go right now. Capital N with the ball. Manny Isaac is the quarterback. He's wearing number 12, and he's in the shotgun position. You can hear the signals being called. They get it off. Keeping it on the ground. Still motoring, still driving. Good second and third effort. Brought out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. It's going to be a third down in about eight situation for Capital Land. And once again, we had Damon Walker coming in there on a timed blitz, picked up well by the Capital Land Thunder offensive line. And uh, as the play went for about three or four yards, puts him in a third and another third and uh, long situation, a definite passing down for the Thunder. And we'll see if Isaac operates out of the shotgun once again. Charles Chandler uh, carrying the ball right there for Capital Land. Capital Land in black. There's a couple of gentlemen on that team that have done a stint with the Green Jackets, including... Big Bill Scott wearing number 65 on the sidelines right now. You'll see him on goal line defenses primarily. He was part of that uh, great 97 squad in the New York League. Manny staying in the shotgun. Big third down and eight situation. Fake handoff to Cooperwood. He's keeping the ball. He's throwing. He's got his man, but uh, brought down almost at the line of scrimmage, maybe behind that. So it's going to be a fourth down at midfield. And I would expect that Capital Land would do punting right and, now. And you're, and you're right, Bill, as they change over here. But once again, we saw Gamacho with the tackle. Seeing already thus far early on this evening how important it is to have Gamacho back in the lineup at the corner position. Just strengthens that, strengthens that green jacket defense that much more. Of course, the loss of Rowan is always a loss when you lose somebody of his caliber. The Jackets have done well so far this evening to pick up the load or carry the load without Rowan. The Jackets are very deep on offense in both defense and offense this year. And uh, they're able to fill in the holes when they need to. The loss of Rowan is important, but they're doing a good job throwing it thus far. Damon Walker, wide right on the coverage. And, of course, number 41, Rudy Jason Johnson, in on this one as well. Going to try to get a piece of the kicker, I'm sure. Here we go. Nice snap. 
Gets a boot into it at about the 40. A short kick, but it's taking a capital A and roll. We have a flag on the play as the ball's down at about the 22, and I heard somebody behind me say too many men on the field, and that is the preliminary indication, and that is never good. Those type of penalties drive coaches absolutely insane. Yeah, and uh, pre yeah, preliminary indication is that it is against Green Jackets. We'll let the, uh, the referees sort this thing out and make their decision, but uh, the result of which looks like it will be a first down, I believe, for the Thunder. Well, that would be big for the Thunder, and again... Coaches don't like uh, the 15-yard personal foul penalties because they can be prevented, and they certainly don't like 12 men on the field. That reflects badly on everybody involved. You're going to be offsides occasionally, but those other two are pesky. Right. They shall shorten things out. Right. And the Jackets have done a very good job this year thus far to uh, eliminate the, uh, the undisciplined type of penalties, which are too many men on the field, uh, unsportsmanlike, jumping on offense or on defense not before the snap and those type of penalties. They've done a great job thus far this evening, a rare penalty of that, of that kind for the Jackets. They, they understand their positions on the field and their substitutions very well. I'm surprised to see that call. Yeah, practice, practice, practice. And sometimes with work schedules and, and personal commitments, the guys can't make all of them. But uh, it shows on the field on Saturday night, and uh, that may have been the case there. So now it's fourth down. They move it to fourth down and about one yard to go for Capital Land. And I'd expect they'd go for it at this point. They have a solid opportunity of making it, especially when you have some great running backs like Charles Chandler, number 20, or, of course, Sylvester Cooperwood. You can't go wrong, but you've got to give them some blocking. Here they come, out of the huddle. Eight minutes, 27 seconds. Clock continues to run here at the first quarter at Bleecker and Albany. Bill Callahan along with Chris Drennan. Seven to nothing to score. The Green Jackets with the lead. Albany right now trying to convert a fourth down situation. Isaac under center, of course, trying to woo the Jackets off. That's a good strategy. If it works, they'll get a first down. Let's see what the officials say. Was it illegal procedure or was it offsides by the Jackets? Officials having a little huddle on this one. Oh, boy. First down. Again. Well, that's two critical mistakes in a row, Bill, by the Jackets. As I mentioned, discipline and being a disciplined team as they are, that was one case where they were looking to, uh, looking, thinking run all the way. They were going to try to jump that count, uh, threw a few defensive backs up in there to, uh, to plug the gaps and blitz, and they just mistimed it just ever so slightly and made contact prior to the snap. Okay, ketchup mustard, excellent. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Sandra. The hot dogs have arrived, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, 749 remaining first down situation. Ooh, squished behind the line of scrimmage. The defense looking off. And once again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. That was number 25, Damon Walker, once again coming off the left side of the line, so or the right side of the Thunder line. And uh, I think, you know, it's going to be giving them fits all night. They keep throwing them on the left and the right. They keep staggering uh, uh, both, you know, wherever they put them, it's, it's, it's never the same. And uh, just keeping them off balance. But what it does is it just creates one person that has no man assigned to him. And Damon was able to run the running back down as he tried to sweep left. And this uh, defense... A defensive role for Damon Walker uh, not only requires great athletic ability, which everybody agrees he has, requires good brain power, too, because your timing and your anticipation is very, very critical, and he seems to pull it off time after time. I don't know how he gets that rush in without going offsides more. Here we go. Isaac throwing. He's got his man, but great defense. Gabe Young picks it off. Beautiful job by Gabe Young. Wow. Defense comes through again, Chris Drenna. Defense once again, and you have Gabe Young back there playing the free safety position, tracking the ball, watching Isaac as he, as he kind of latched onto his receiver, gave it away, and drifted over there in double coverage as Gabe slid over there and picked off the ball. Great job by Gabe Young to anticipate that throw and read Isaac's size. And remember, folks, it has been defense. We have not seen, <laughs> we have not seen the Green Jackets offense until right now with 6.52 remaining, believe it or not. The first score came when the defense recovered a fumble. That was Damon Walker, number 25, running it in. A lot of back and forth with a couple penalties. Pick off there by Gabe Young. Green Jackets have it. First and 10. Ball right now at about the 16-17 yard line. And here comes Whitey Siska, number 12. Kevin Siska, Hudson Valley and RPI. Second year with the Jackets. Started all 18 games last year. Great leader. Long count back. Siska's back. He's looking. He's throwing. He's got Dan Chandler. Very nice. Close to a first down, too. Close to a first down. I believe he did fall forward for the first down. Great job there by, uh, by Kevin Siska to read the uh, blitz by the defensive back and get a quick throw out there to uh, 
to Dan Chandler, and it isn't first down for the Green Jackets. Green Jackets are going to be tested tonight because the defense came through during the last game, only allowing 13 points all game long. Now, the offense has got to do more than score 17 here tonight. And they're under a little bit of pressure to do it, but based on what they've been able to accomplish against Long Island, as well as Orange County, Montreal, and Scranton, I think they might be able to pull it off tonight. Green Jackets with the win to their back. It's first down and 10 yards to go right now. They have a 7 to nothing lead as the clock continues to run here in the first quarter from Bleeker on a, on a chilly night, and it feels darn good, let me tell you. Another pass, successful to number 17, Dan Chandler. They're going to blow him down, but not before getting another first down, plus another 7 or 8 yards on top of it. Beautifully done. Outstanding job there by Chandler to reach out, extend out, make that catch just ahead of the defensive back. Great job by Kevin Siska to get that throw out to them. You're seeing, what you're seeing right there is just... A receiver and a quarterback knowing each other very well. Their timing is great. And uh, Dan Chandler, we've seen him make catches like that before. And like you said, Bill, he is down by contact. And uh, the Jackets come to the line quickly here trying to catch the defense of the Capitan Thunder off balance. So two to Dan Chandler that have worked. Let's see if Gabe Young on this side can get one. Of course, he just had the pick on defense, so he's off to a great start. Kevin Siska calling the, uh, making some changes, actually, to the offense under center. He's back. He's looking to his right. Now he's looking to his left again. Three times in a row to Dan Chandler. Three completions. Unbelievable. That, that is just an outstanding throw by Kevin Siska. Had a defensive back in front of Dan Chandler. He had to put a little air underneath it. Just dropped it in over the top. It's a touch pass. I mean, one thing you have to do as a quarterback is there's times when you have to throw it on the line. There's times when you have to drop it with touch. That was a perfect touch pass by Kevin Siska right over the defensive back, right into the arms of Dan Chandler. Another first down for the Jackets. And it should be pointed out with the wind blowing and gusting behind his back throwing that ball and having it touch just like that requires a little bit of extra skill and you're absolutely right as we have a timeout by the thunder right now while we're in a timeout here i would like to mention once again that the wide receivers and tight ends for tonight's contest are sponsored by mccann's pharmacy your hometown full service pharmacy on the park in hudson falls free delivery seven days a week well ladies and gentlemen the green jackets with the ball the green jackets with a seven to nothing lead we have 418 right now and a capital A in timeout here at Bleecker Stadium. As I pointed out, been the scene of many great sporting events, including a lot of Empire Football League games, going back uh, to the Albany Spoilers, of course, the Metro Maulers, the Tri-City Giants. They've all played here in both the Empire League and the Eastern League. Then you take a look at soccer. The New York Eagles in the American Soccer League played here for many years. Uh, the double-A baseball team here that was the Albany Colony A's before it was the Yankees got its start here before Heritage Park was completed. Of course, they've had wrestling, Twilight League baseball for many, many years, as well as exhibition pro baseball. This has been quite the spot. International rugby, you name it. And it all got started during the Depression when Mr. Roosevelt made some money available and they drained this reservoir and turned it into a stadium. We're glad they did. Here we go. Green Jackets with the ball. First and 10, they've got it right now at the 37-yard line. Here we go. Number 12, Kevin Whitey Siska. Remains under center. Long count. Here we go. Keeping it on the ground. 28, Andre Wyatt. Running for almost five yards to the, just off the left of center. And that's the first time this evening we've seen a handoff to anybody with the Green Jackets on, on, the, uh, on the offensive side of the ball now. And uh, you, see, uh, you see Andre Wyatt move the pile and gain about five yards, so... The running game is looking like uh, it has some potential to uh, be effective this evening. If they do, and they can get that running game and make it work tonight, it's just going to make it that much more difficult on the Capitan Thunder to cover the pass as well. So Jackets are trying to get a little establishment of the run here. They did, uh, did well on that play with Andre Wyatt. Remember, three successful passes to the left in a row to Dan Chandler have set this up right now. Now a nice run. Now it's time to establish the running game. Siska, a couple of adjustments before he gets under center. Capital Land makes adjustments on D. Here we go, keeping it on the ground. Motoring number 22. Oh, Sakima Grimes, beautifully done. What a run. Yeah, Sakima Grimes just ripping off the yardage there. And once again, we see the depth of the interchangeability of the running backs of the Green Jackets. It doesn't matter whether it's Grimes or Wyatt in there, although they both were in on that play, as we saw last week, two running backs in, and not the, uh, we didn't see much of the fullbacks, either Sylvester or Green, and that was the case right there, but Grimes ripping off big yardage. And uh, they're interchangeable, and they both run well. First and 10 right now. Green Jackets knocking on the door. Beautiful night. I actually have to wear a coat, and I absolutely love it. Fall's just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. 
All teams in the Empire League have next week off, Labor Day weekend. It's a tradition in the Empire League. Everybody usually needs the rest, including the announcers. Here we go. They're keeping it on the ground, still motoring. Number 22. Beautiful job. Grimes probably a gain there of about six, seven. Yeah, and once again, we see another first down play, a running play, where the Jackets are able to rip off five-plus yards. And when you can do that, it makes it all that much easier for your offense to, uh, to continue to maintain first downs and drive down the field. Another, position, another situation where they ripped off about seven with Grimes. Kevin Siska huddling, of course, with uh, Tommy Mayer, getting his instructions. Second down, four yards to go for the Green Jackets. Wind to the back of the Jackets. The Jackets, of course, had a successful uh, road game two weeks ago in Ottawa against Montreal. This is the second road game of four road games this year in the Empire League. On the sixth, they travel to Orange County, Monroe, New York. And the last uh, weekend of the season, the 27th, they travel to Scranton, Pennsylvania, Lackawanna County Stadium, which is actually in Moosick, Pennsylvania, equidistant between Wilkes-Barre and Scranton. And we have a timeout called by the Green Jackets. We actually have a penalty on the play. Oh, really? Lovely. Maybe too much time? Uh, that we do have a delay game. It was a delay game because I didn't see anybody flinch there. Brings it back five yards. Brings it back to, uh, let's see, about the 19-yard line? Yeah, 19-yard line. So it's going to be second down and uh, about nine. Good, uh, good representation of Green Jackets fans across the field from us. Tradition for some people. Uh, some people make a, only one road game, but it's usually against Albany. That's great to see. Whitey's back. He hands off. Grimes again? No, nope, he doesn't. He fooled me, and like I've said many times before, that's pretty easy to do. Incomplete pass there. It's going to be third down at about nine for the Jackets. And it brings up a definite passing situation. Here looking at the mile markers and trying to figure it out. Mile markers, yeah, <laughs> right, sure. 37-mile field goal, yeah. Here we go. Bagstad, University of Albany product. One minute and five seconds. This would be big for the Green Jackets. We don't expect this to be a shootout. We expect it to be close. Danny Chandler, number 17, taking the snap and holding. Kicks up. He's got the wind behind him. Yes, it's good. Hey, that was a big one, huh? Well, yeah, it was a big kick for the Jackets. And Bill, I believe he, he had a good 10, 15, 20 yards left on that ball. I mean, that was a 50-yard-plus kick. He got all of that football um, with, with actually some pressure in his face. Good concentration by Bagstad. We've seen that from him before. That's why he was all league kicker last year. And uh, he has a very good possibility of becoming all league kicker once again this year. Yeah, he's really really ratcheting up his game as the season goes on. One of the things about a kicker, and I know you could talk about this from experience, that you know, you're know you not kicking every play. And if a receiver drops a football or, or runs a bad pattern, usually within a play or two, they're running the pattern and they have a chance to catch football again. So they don't have the chance to dwell on it. You guys go out there and you kick. And if it happens to be a bad kick or it just happens not to be quite there, You've got 10, 15, 20 minutes to think about it. At least. And, and your whole game, you're right, is actually predicated upon maybe four or five plays, where as a receiver, you've got many plays or a running back, many plays to make up for that. So you really got to stress the quality. You've really got to concentrate because, uh, you know, one, one bad kick and, and it's a bad evening. So uh, it's a great job at Bagstad, a good start for him. And as we see Vinny get ready to kick the ball off here. But uh, Bagstad's confidence appears to be pretty high. Vinny gets a boot into it. Again, the wind at his back. This one taken all the way back at about the three-yard line. He's across the 20. The 25 almost brought down the 30. He's cutting in. He's motoring. He stays inbounds. He's still going. Number six, still driving hard, and finally brought down, and I mean finally, by number 32. So it's Shane Sportman, huh? Yeah, Shane Sportman running him down from behind as he, as he weaved his way inside and outside of the Green Jacket defenders. But it brings up an outstanding field position for the Thunder, a position they need to be in right now. They need to put some points on the board to not let this game run out from underneath them. Clinton, number six, doing the running there for Capital Land. Looked very sharp. This is a great opportunity for the Thunder offense. A little bit of pressure on them right now. You're down 10 to nothing. You haven't had that chance to put everything together yet. Now's the chance to make a statement. Isaac remains in at quarterback, and he's staying at, uh, yeah, staying at the shotgun position. There we go. He's going against the wind right now, so keep that in mind. Handoff. Boy, that works. No, it doesn't. Pummeled for a major loss. Kenny Hackett. Kenny Hackett, the, uh, the outstanding defensive end for the Green Jackets. We've seen that before, that play before. They've tried it many occasions, trying to run that, that 
from the shotgun position, actually, that inside handoff, and uh, not fooling the Jackets that time. Actually going backwards out of the Thunder. They can ill afford not to get a first down here. A first down puts them in field goal position, and they can at least have an opportunity to come away with three as the quarter ends. And the quarter does end, Chris. Ten to nothing to score. Green Jackets are on top. We'll be back with 15 more minutes of play. This is Green Jackets football on WNCE North Country 8. So, beginning of the second quarter here, Bleaker, over Bleaker Stadium, Bill Kelly and along with Chris Drennan, Capital Land with the football. Isaac back, Isaac scrambling, Isaac gets it off, miraculous pass, incomplete. He could have gotten stopped. Yeah, and we had uh, heavy pressure there from Kenny Hackett, and a hit just as Isaac released the ball, I believe from Gamash, and uh, I believe it was Gamash in, in, as Isaac tried to release that ball down the field. Did a good job, just let the ball go as he got hit out of bounds on the sideline. Brings up a third and very long situation for the Thunder. They do need a first down here to put themselves in some kind of makeable field goal range. Well, good. I've uncovered that problem. I can't hear myself. I can't hear myself. Turn the microphone on, Bill. There we go. What, 32 years in the business? 14 minutes, 52 seconds remaining. Second quarter action. Bill Callahan along with Chris Drennan. Boy, I'll tell you, it's a close one. 10 to nothing, but the Green Jacket's on top right now. Defense being tested. Great field position. Uh, on a running back, a run back on a kickoff, and so Capital Land has a great opportunity, but it is third down and long, third down and about 18 yards to go. Isaac is a quarterback. He takes it from the shotgun, well protected. Capital Land wearing the black and gold, of course. Isaac's back. Isaac's being pursued. He gets it off. Oh, 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 number 88 should have had it. Maybe he shouldn't have had it, depending on his position. And I'm just taking a peek here, and, uh, oh, Rich. Derek Killian, tight end position, number 88. And uh, I just think he was a little out of position to yeah, bring that well, one. Well, he was just a throw behind by Isaac as he rolled to his right with some pressure coming from his left side. And uh, unfortunately, since they went backwards on that play, even though they have the, uh, the advantage of the wind at their back this quarter, they're in a definite punting situation. We're seeing a punt now by the Thunder as they seem to have a personnel issue here before they get the punt off. And uh, we may have a delay of game or a timeout if they don't get this ball off soon enough. The gentleman from the gate, Jason Bradwell, doing the kicking. Oh, high snap. He brings it down nicely, gets a boot into it, has the distance, if not the hang time, definitely takes a roll for Capital Land. Gabe Young does a good job tucking that in, but we have a flag on the play. Yeah, we do have a flag on the play, and actually Gabe on that, it was kind of caught in no man's land there. He really needed to come up and, and, and approach that ball and field it on the fly rather than let it bounce. And then, of course, if it does hit the ground, you just got to get away from it. Sure. Gabe kind of got himself hung up there, thought he could kind of field it on the roll. Probably shouldn't have done that. Actually got a hand on the ball. That ball was a, a free ball there. Could have been a, a key mistake for the Green Jackets, but he was able to pick, pick up that ball in the end zone and fall on it. And we do have a penalty. I believe it is on the Green Jackets. We'll back them up even that much closer to their own end zone. Ooh, Kenny Hackett hearing, hearing the bad news from the official. And they're going to trot this one back. And uh, they're going to be operating right now in a tough situation, but they've been there before, and they have the comfort of a 10 to nothing lead right now. 14:35 remaining, first uh, second quarter, I should say. It's going by very quickly. By the way, the running backs for the Green Jackets, sponsored by Luis's Italian Bistro, homemade Italian favorites, great food, great prices. South Glens Falls, seven four five five zero five five, and one more pitch for the offensive line, sponsored by Access Technology and Luzerne Webworks. Everything you need for computers in your business, helping you help yourself. And I call a phone number, if I got time, 654-5444. And we have a little more time as the officials all gather in the middle of the field here to discuss the last penalty, I believe. So that gives me a moment to mention also that the quarterbacks for tonight's contest are sponsored by the Post Star, reaching 100,000 readers every day from the Capital District to the Adirondacks. Excellent. Green Jackets uh, having a great year. They come in with an overall 6-1 and one record. Remember, the record, as far as we know, and we've tried to research every year we possibly can, is the 12 wins in 1997, followed very closely by the 11 overall wins last year. They have an opportunity to pick up number 7 right here tonight and would be well on their way with playoffs and possibilities of a natural na national to break that record. So a lot of things at stake here tonight. Well, we've got the coaches of the, uh, the hmm. Capitan Thunder wanting an explanation of that penalty, I believe. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the, uh, what the penalty was as far as a uh, personal foul goes, but maybe they were saying it was of the variety where it, it deserved maybe some kind of uh, ejection from the game. I'm not sure. Maybe we can get some clarification on that a little later. But whatever the case be, it's a, it's a half a distance penalty to the goal line. 
and I believe there has been no player ejected as far as I know. Okay, here we go. First and 10. Green Jackets deep in the hole. Let's see what they do with it. 14-16. Clock moving here. Second quarter. Bleecker Stadium. Bill Callahan along with Chris Drennan. They're keeping it on the ground. And they keep it motoring. Good second effort. Going to be second down and about five, maybe four yards to go, depending on where the officials place the football. Yeah, I mean, that's all you can basically ask for when, you, when you're handing the ball off and running it on first down is to give your, put your quarterback, your offensive unit, in a position of a second and five or less. That's everything that the Green Jackets have done thus far this evening. Every time they've given a handoff to either Wyatt or Grimes on first down, they've been able to give them that kind of yardage. So good job by both the running backs to keep their legs churning and falling forward for additional yards when they're hit. And that time, Andre Wyatt, number 28. Right now, second down, four yards to go. Whitey brings him out of the huddle. Here we go. Keeping it on the ground again. Spin, spin, run, spin. Hmm. Tough one. And we had a rare carry there by actually by Tony Green, the fullback, seeing his first action of the evening. Uh, it's been kind of a situation where they've had two running backs back there in Wyatt and Grimes, and now we're seeing more of a traditional approach with a fullback and a running back as Tony Green got the handoff for about maybe one, two yards, but brings up a third and about five or six. A definite, I would say, a definite passing situation for Kevin Siska and the Green Jacket offense. Yeah, don't be surprised if we see uh, four guys going out for a pass. Well, at least three here. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, Tony, uh, early appearance tonight as a running back. Tony will play any position you ask him and do it well. He's a great team player and leader. Third down and a long four to go. Snuff behind the line of scrimmage. Sack. Wow, that's big. So that's going to be fourth down and forever, and we're going to be in a punting situation. And on that tackle was number 52, the linebacker, Brian uh, Domingo, I believe is what yeah. it is. Yeah. And uh, definitely a, a great job by him to actually put the Jackets in their first punting situation of the evening. And uh, do not forget, though, that the Jackets are going from right to left into that strong headwind there. Point. So we should see a situation where uh, the uh, Thunder should actually end up in very good field position. Here we go. And, of course, who does the kicking? He plays offense. He plays defense. He holds for point afters. He's the punter as well. Number 17, Dan Chandler. A uh, great find he has been for this football team over the last three years. And Dan Chandler is calling a timeout to the official. Doesn't like something. Perhaps we don't have enough men on the field. I'm not sure. Yeah, I bet you that was it. Yeah, as we run another player out there right now. And yeah, it seems like the Jackets are a little bit in disarray on the uh, special teams unit this evening as we've seen two mistakes now made on the special teams. Uh, too many men on the field on one time, and now not enough men on the field. But also, you have a wasted timeout. As a coach, the one thing you don't want to do with your timeout is waste them on special teams plays. You don't want to see that happen because you don't know what you're going to need come the end of a half. That was a situation where the Jackets had to take a timeout. Of course, you don't want to give up a block when you're deep in your backup, as the Jackets are right now. And the one thing that is missing is a true special teams coach, and it's something that the Green Jackets haven't had in a few years. A very important role. It's tough to find somebody that has the expertise and the love of special teams to focus in on it. But they're worth their weight in gold, and that's the one thing that the Green Jackets will be hoping to get in their stocking during Christmas, and I can't believe I said that. Dan Chandler, number 17. He's doing the putting for the Green Jackets after we get everybody out in the field. He takes a nice boot. Good hang time against the wind. Not great distance, but it's taking a Jackets bounce. And there we go. The ball at about the 42 or 43, actually the 38 or 39-yard line. No, Bill, we're not in Ottawa anymore. Wind is still good crisp, and I think Chris Drennan's uh, uh, analysis of uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour is, is pretty, pretty accurate. It gets up above the rim of this bowl, which isn't too high, and uh, it, 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 like, hits a wall. Yeah, and, it, and that was evidenced by that punt. As, he, as Dan got that punt up in the air, you can see it hang up in that wind and actually fall straight down. When you're punting into a wind, you want to drive the ball and keep it low to the ground, actually. You're not really working on hang time so much, and you get better distance on it. Of course, that was one where Dan got a little bit underneath it, put a little air under, under it, and it actually fell uh, shorter than I think he'd like it to. Here we go. Isaac stays in at quarterback. Don't expect a lot of wholesale changes from Capital Land tonight. It's a good, solid football team with great athletes. Let's see what happens. Quick throw. Got his man. Cuts inside. I'm surprised. Still gaining. Driving those legs. Nice one. So there we go. Bring that down to about the 30-yard line. And that's Maceo Clinton with that catch. And what we've seen thus far this evening from Isaac is he likes to operate a lot out of the shotgun, which I don't think is such a bad idea due to the, uh, the blitzing nature of the, of the Jackets and their defensive unit, the, the, uh, particularly Damon Walker. And uh, Maceo has been uh, a player that uh, so far this evening that Isaac has liked to go to, and he showed you right there why he likes to go to him as he was able to uh, 
back step, side step, and dance around for an additional few yards and brings up a second in very short situation. Clinton, of course, wearing uh, uh, number six. Number 20 seeing a lot of action. That's Chandler, Charles Chandler for Capital Land. And, of course, uh, number four, Sylvester Cooperwood. Seen him on a few plays. Not a lot of activity yet. Second down and about a yard to go for the Thunder. Isaacs right now in the shotgun. He's been operating there most of the evening. A good, good move against this defense. He's tucking it in. No, he's not going anywhere. Pulled out of bounds, pushed out of bounds. And I'll tell you, uh, Green Jackets defense looking pretty solid right now. Yeah, pursued from behind by Damon Walker and from the side, also from his in position with Kenny Hackett on that play. Uh, actually not, uh, we're going to see where the referees spot this, as I believe they look like they're going to move the mm, yeah. chains for a first down Wow, for the Thunder. Now that puts them in a position here where they are right now with the wind at their backs, that they definitely will come away with at least a field goal attempt, if nothing else, on this series. Yeah, and uh, Bradwell, uh, Jason Bradwell can definitely kick from this distance. Um, Bradwell, of course, has been with Capital Land the last few years. Did kick one game in Arena 2 for Roanoke as a fill-in player. He certainly got the leg to make it from this distance, no question about it. Here we go. Capital Land knocking on the door. Clock continues to run. Nine and a half minutes left. Here's Sylvester Cooperwood. That's the running we've uh, come to know and love from him. He's a great running back, and he brings it down across the 20 to about the 19 and a half. Yeah, and that's some hard running there by Cooperwood as the, uh, the offensive unit for the Thunder appear to have uh, picked up a little momentum or, or gained a little confidence as he tried to drive down the field and put some points on the board. But they strung an extra point, or an extra point, they strung a first down together, and now they look like they're about to put another one uh, together as well, and they are definite, in definite field goal range. So uh, some points on the board for the Thunder would do a lot to uh, remedy the situation right now being down 10 to nothing and put them in a good situation going into the half. Second down and about three yards to go. There's a very good possibility that uh, we will see Capital Land for the third time this season in a playoff situation. Probably, if that happens, it would be up at East Field in Glens Falls. Here we go. Second and three. Capital Land with the ball. Trying to get the first points on the board this evening. Quick handoff to Cooperwood. Cooperwood doing what he does well. He's down across the 10-yard line. First down, Capital Land. Another bit of hard running there by Cooperwood. Uh, running very hard, running through arm tackles. And uh, so far, what I've seen from him, He's that kind of a runner, very powerful runner. But they found something they like here, and they're going to continue to export it until the Green Jacks are able to put a stop to it. Another first down for the Thunder brings them to about the, uh, I believe, about the 12-yard line. No, actually, it's going to be first and goal, so they are inside the 10-yard line. Thunder definitely driving, definitely have some momentum going. Definitely. Capital, and of course, Cooper Wood played for the Green Jackets last year in the Nationals. You are permitted in this format to add a few players. We added, I believe, five. One of them was Cooper Wood for three games. So we're very familiar with this talent, both on our side and against us. And uh, keeping it on the ground, Capital Land, because that seems to be working for him. You hear the wind gust behind us. That is a strong gust, and that's to the backs of Capital Land right now. They've got to make it happen this quarter. 7.51 remaining. Clock continues to run. As they pile on, pile the masses here. I think we've got a jacket that's a little slow to get up, and he drags himself to his feet. So I think he's coming off under his own power, but he appears to be a little bit uh, um, gimpy, and that's number 85, and that is... Cortez Pritchett? Cortez yeah. Pritchett. Right. Mr. Pritchett. I hope he's doing well. Hope he is doing well. No, I'm sorry, that's Willie Artis. Oh, what? Willie Artis is number Willis. Sorry, Cortez. Right. How can we... All 455 pounds of Willie Artis, how could we mistake him? Wow. The biggest man on the Green Jackets roster. Wow. My word. Oh. Yep. Second down. Goal to goal. Capital Land with the ball. Win to their backs. Trying to get their first points on the board. Well, scoring a fair. Uh, Ten points. Keep in mind, the Green Jackets have scored over 40 the last two games. Over 30 the, it's the previous two games. Uh, so ten points here with seven minutes remaining in the first half. Kind of a low-scoring affair. Shows you that the defense for Capital Land very strong. Yeah, and we're, as the Jackets use their second timeout, Coach Pete Quackenbush out there talking over with talking things over with the defensive unit. We have a moment to pause. I'd like to mention that the linebackers once again this evening are, are sponsored by the UPS store. Mailboxes, etc. is now the UPS store in the Hannaford Plaza at 175 Broad Street in Glens Falls. My first game here at Bleecker Stadium as a, as a spectator was uh, the Metro Maulers. Uh, uh, playing the Salt City Aces from Syracuse. Uh, it was a j hot July night, about 1,500 people here at Bleecker. 
as uh, Albany went in to win in a very close game. The second football game I saw here was 1986. It was the Tri-City Giants hosting the Scranton Eagles. Yes, John Kennedy was quarterbacking even then. And uh, Butch Keller, our commissioner, was the head coach. And it was 40 to nothing by about this point in the game in the second quarter. Scranton, of course, led. So uh, a lot of football history here. It's amazing how quickly time goes by when you're having fun. Goal to goal right now for Capital Land. Quick uh, throw up the middle. Picked uh, off. Beautifully job. Beautiful job. Boy, defense comes through again. Still on his feet. Still motoring. Big, 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 big play. That is really going to hurt Capital Land, and we have a flag on the play. Yeah, we have a flag on a play that isn't going to change the outcome of that play as far as possession goes. But what you had there was a quick throw over the middle to the tight end. Hit hard and hanging around the ball once again is Damon Walker picking yeah. that ball up and taking it up the right side for a sizable gain. But better yet, it's a turnover for the Green Jackets, nullifying any opportunity of the Capital Land Thunder to put any points on the board. Put the Jackets in a situation with 7.14 left on the clock to gain another lead, at least three points, possibly seven. You gotta take you gotta take a look at the Green Jackets defense. Not only do you have great talent, but you've got great coaching. Uh, first of all, Pete Quackenbush, high school ball in New Jersey. Four years, University of Maine, and then the Yankee Conference, linebacker on, on defense. Then he goes to the Hartford Knights, okay? Plays two years in the Atlantic Coast Football League, and let me tell you, that was a high level of ball back then. That was about the equivalent of the XFL in terms of level of play uh, two years ago, okay? Then he winds up playing for the Green Jackets. He winds up coaching the Green Jackets, and he also comes down and plays for the Metro Maulers when they're in the Seaboard League. Plus, he's coached high school ball. This guy knows defense better than just about anybody in the area. And it's great to have him with the, the Green Jackets again. First and 10. Right now, the Green Jackets offense back on the field. Let's see what they can do with it. Long count. Here we go. Whitey Sisk is back. Whitey's looking. He gets it off before he gets snuffed. Complete pass. First down. Green Jackets ball at the 35-yard line. And once again, Kevin Siska did a great job there to roll to his right as he was under heavy pressure and just fine. I believe that was that Gabe Young on that catch? Yeah, I believe so, uh, yeah. Just hanging out there over in, in, in a pocket, in a seam, if you will, and uh, waiting for the ball there as Kevin floated it over the top of the defenders and into Gabe's hands. Uh, they just have a great understanding of each other, the quarterback or the quarterback, Kevin Siska does, and his receivers, and it was evidence right there. Here we go. We got one back in the backfield. Four gentlemen going out for a pass, two on each side. Siska under center. He's back in a first down situation. Cuts up front, throws. Oh, should have been caught, really. Yeah, it was thrown into traffic. I think there may have been some obstruction there, but that was uh, uh, Kevin. We've seen that pass many times before and completed by Chris Glover, uh, one of Kevin's or maybe Kevin's favorite receiver just because he's out of familiarity, playing together back when they were kids in, uh, in Pop Warner, I believe it was and uh, midget football, but uh, that was just a situation there where it was just in some traffic and Glover wasn't able to come down with it. But that was the first time this evening we've seen a pass go Glover's way. Kind of unusual this far into the, into the half or the game that we haven't seen his number called yet. Great observation. 6.05 remaining, second quarter. Green Jackets with the ball. They're going against the wind right now. So scoring a touchdown going to become that much more important. Here we go, keeping it up the middle. I believe it's Wyatt with the ball. Gain of about five. It'll be third down and five or third or four, depending on when the, where the officials mark the football. And once again, it was Andre Wyatt with the ball, getting his uh, customary five to six <laughs> yards on every running play that he's had thus far this evening. But it does put him in a third and about uh, six or seven yards to go. You're going to see Kevin Siska here go for the pass. Certainly the most improved skill position on offense has got to be Andre Wyatt this year. Game in and game out. He is delivering with second effort. Here we go. Throws the ball. Ball tipped up. Picked off. Ooh, boy, that hurts. That hurts. Capital Land with the ball. Green Jackets turn one over. Well, we see the first miscue this evening on, uh, uh, by Kevin Siska. Uh, just under throwing that ball a little bit. Or, or, and good job by actually number 54, Chris uh, Garasi, I believe it is being able to tip that ball up to himself and making the interception. A great opportunity for the Thunder, not only to stop that drive of the Green Jackets, but to turn the ball back around on offense and actually see if they can build or build on that momentum that they had going prior to the interception the previous time down the field by Isaac. Very quick half of football. We're down to 526 remaining here at Bleecker Stadium. Bill Callahan along with Chris Drennan. It's the Green Jackets against the arch rival Capital A and Thunder. Second meeting between these two clubs this year. The first one, as you remember, 
was a chippy affair up at East Field. The Green Jackets were very lucky to come away with a 17 to 13 win. And right now, Capital Land wanting to get on the scoreboard. They're down 10 to nothing, which uh, which is not a big margin, but against the great Green Jackets defense, uh, it's going to be tough if they don't get on the board soon. They're keeping the ball up the middle and on the ground. Gain of about four. Clock continues to run, though. If they continue running up the middle, they're going to have to get into some good clock management. On that tackle for the Green Jackets, I believe it was number 85, Big Willie Artis there. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Willie Artis there with the tackle back in the game after coming off the field, Gimpy on the last series for the defense. So good to see him back in the ball game. Second down and about seven yards to go for the Thunder. Puts them in a situation here where I believe they're probably, probably going to do something in the way to pass. With four minutes and 29 seconds and ticking on the clock, they're going to have to get down the field in a hurry. Here we go. Isaac's the quarterback for Capital Land. Second down, short eight. Keeping it on the ground, number 20, Chandler. Good second effort, but it's going to still be a third down and probably about three for Capital Land when they come out of the pile. And we'll take under four minutes here in the half. Yeah, I think somewhere along the lines here, you're going to have to see some kind of completion downfield just due to the length of time on the clock and the amount of, amount of real estate they have left to go. They can't keep running those balls and getting four or five yards, two and three yards, and taking three, three possessions, or I mean three uh, plays to get a first down and put anything on the board. They just don't have enough time on the clock to do that. Jason Bradwell, of course, number 10 is the kicker. He's got the leg, especially with the wind behind him. So you're probably going to see at least an attempt for a field goal. He can do it. He really can do it. Here we go. Isaac, unusual under center this time. He's back, keeping it on the ground. We have a flag on the play. Still motoring Cooper Wood. Cooper Wood across midfield and a lot more. Down to about the 35, but that flag will be interesting. That's the play that the Capitan Thunder needed to see. Now, I think that the way that that penalty, the way it fell and where the way the defense was played by the Jackets, yeah, I believe it was, and it was. It was on Damon Walker, I believe. Just jumping the count a little bit, trying to get in the backfield. But a quick hitter like that, a quick hand up up the middle, and he was able to find a quick seam and burst through before the Jackets even knew what hit him and was able to gain big yards on the run. That's exactly what they needed with three minutes and counting on the clock. Puts them in great field position now with plenty of time on the clock now for them to make something happen. Remember, uh, the only changes to the Green Jackets' D from last week, John Rowan is not playing. Uh, we move A.Z. Longmire to Rowan's position. We put Brian Northern in, who's been playing a superb utility man's role on defense. We put him in A.Z.'s position. And, of course, we, we have Gamash back from his two-game injury. So those are the changes on D. Everything looking pretty sharp. I wouldn't want to go against them. Here we go. First and ten. Isaac's got the football. Ball at the 35-yard line. Back. Quick pitch out. Cooperwood's got it. Looking for room around the corner. He does not get it. Looks like Northern's got him. Yeah, Brian Northern moving up there and closing in to make the tackle on Cooperwood after a gain, a short gain of about two to three yards. Maybe four if it looks like the referees are going to give him the ball where they are, which is a very generous spot. Now he's a backup now, which I think is a little bit more realistic of where he went down. So he got about three, maybe three and a half yards on that play, and the clock continues to tick. I do think that the Capitan Thunder have the um, the benefit of, I believe, I mean, they may have three of their all three of their timeouts. I don't believe they've used any in this quarter, if I'm not mistaken. So plenty of time for them with their timeout to make something happen. Here we go. Capital Land has said that they could score right now, go into the locker room, down three points. They've, they've got to be on top of the world. And we have... Do we have a penalty or we just have an official's timeout? Looks like we got a penalty. Going to trot it back five. Too much time, illegal procedure. Frankly, I don't know what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. Second down. Uh, yeah, I don't, see any I don't see any flags on the field, so I'm not quite sure what the call is. But when the official stopped the clock, he didn't point in either direction, indicating a timeout on either side. So, uh, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, and it won't be the first time you hear this. Oh, say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's the two-minute warning. There we go. There we go. Only been, only been around the game now since, what, you know, 1950-something. And the two-minute warning. Who would have thought it? Uh, here we go. Boy, that wind. This is great. I'll tell you, you know, the last three or four games, it was like you lose seven or eight pounds doing a game uh, in the heat. And now you got to get the coat on and button everything up. I'll tell you, what a what a switch. Welcome to welcome to the North Country. And we've seen that one. We've seen that all last year. We ran the spectrum from from the hot, steamy days down to the uh, the bitter cold with the snow, snow. and the wind blowing. So 
This is no surprise. This is more indicative of football weather. This is football weather right now tonight. I totally agree. Man in motion. Isaac's back. Isaac's under pressure. Does a good job just to get it off. Thrown out of bounds. Bo James was hoping to stay under it and get an interception, but no walk there. And that he was tough. hit once again by number 25, Damon Walker, calling his name quite frequently tonight. But no, Isaac did a good job just to let that ball go to avoid the sack. Brings up a third and about seven or eight yards. But what it did do was keep them from losing yardage and taking them out of any possible field goal range. Yeah, very good point. Minute 53 seconds. Clock uh, is an issue right now. The Green Jackets get a hold of the football again. I doubt Capital Land will have another chance before halftime. Capital Land has one crossover game left. They're going to go and play Vermont, although uh, the site is to be determined. And that would probably be a win for Capital Land. Plus, they have a chance to entertain Scranton in Orange County here at Bleecker. Here we go. Isaac's back. He throws. Oh! Overthrows his man incomplete. Number nine. Got to get my board back up. And I'm not sure we're going to be able to, to determine who number nine is tonight. I thought he was a scratch for the... Yeah, but it is so Duncan. It is that, Duncan. That, that's we a Kelly Duncan. Change. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Had well, Isaac just overthrew him. Uh, had him open. Had a, a rare occasion where Isaac actually had time to let the ball go and didn't have a man in his face. But now it does put him in a position where the Thunder are thinking better of it and not going for the field goal, which would have been in the area about 51 yards, and they're electing to go with the punt. Although I'd have to watch, and I'd have to be very mindful of any kind of trickery here by the Thunder on this fourth down and about seven yards to go. But down 10, with the wind in your back, I would have given Bradwell a shot for a 51-yarder, frankly. Here we go. High snap. Nope, Bradwell's playing it normal. A punt. Looks like it's going to take a uh, definite capital land bounce. And they say he downed it at about the one-yard line. Well, that couldn't have been a better executed punt. No, and, if, and you've got the Jackets now in a position where they have to go 98 yards with a minute 40 on the clock. And I believe they only have the liberty of one timeout remaining due to the fact that they used one on special teams and then one again when they were on offense on the prior series. So you've got a minute 40 to go, one timeout to go. Jackets are up by 10. If, if, if it were me and I were coaching uh, on the other sideline over there, I'd be content to go into the halftime with a 10-0 lead and do stuff here that wasn't uh, very risky. Some handoffs, maybe some very, um, very, uh, you know, passes that are very, uh, yeah. percentages are good. Yeah. And uh, go into halftime with a 10 nothing lead. But look out for this defense. They're going to be itching for two points. They'd love to get two on the scoreboard before we go in. Make a defensive statement. It can be done with this D. It's one of the stingiest Ds in the, in the league, uh, Capital Land. Uh, their offense has not caught up with the defense yet, and that has been their problem. Something we've gone through a little bit very early on in the last two seasons. Uh, but through, through a lot of hard practice and great coaching, we've been able to close that gap quicker. Capital Land's still trying to bring that offense around a little bit more. Their defense has done the job every game. Let's see if they can do it right now, and let's see if that green jacket line can continue to do the great job of keeping them out. Whitey Siska with a minute and 40 seconds. Long count. He's back. He's throwing quickly. Incomplete pass. And that was a timing route to Gabe Young, a quick out. Just the timing was just a little bit off as Cisco let that pass go, maybe a little sooner than he wanted to, but a little sooner than Gabe wanted him to, and it fell incomplete. But the Jackets are in the back, but they don't want to do anything stupid here to give up any cheap points to the Thunder. So uh, you may see something here, just an inside handoff possibly, and they'll be content to just grind this clock down and go into the half with a 10-0 lead. A very close lead for the Jackets, <laughs> considering the last few games that they've had. It had such runaway games. This is a tight one for them. Here we go. Siska, second down and 11. Keeping it up the middle and exactly as you called it, partner. And they're still motoring with the ball. That's a very important first down for the Green Jackets. Andre Wyatt, 28. And, of course, when you have running backs like Andre Wyatt and Sakima Grimes, an inside handoff just to grind the clock out doesn't always turn out that way as they gain a first down. And now maybe they're thinking, hey, maybe we can make something happen. But uh, they're running quick from the, uh, from the huddle here, so maybe they are trying to actually... Move the ball down the field. Here we go. First and 10. Again, keeping it on the ground. Still moving. Not too far, though. It's going to be second down and about eight yards to go for the Green Jackets. Minute and five. Clock continues to run. And now I think they'll, they'll just let it go. Yeah, I think they are going to be content to go in with a 10 nothing lead, which, like I said before, is a very tight lead, a very low-scoring affair for the Jackets, considering the last few games that they played in. 
Here we go. Remember, they gave up only seven last week. Given up none so far this half. Gave up three the week before. Actually, seven the week before and three the week before that. I'm trying to keep track. It's so low. Nice pass. Kind of surprised. Number 17, Dan Chandler. And it does stop the clock, too, Bill. And should have stopped the clock, although the referee continues to wind it and signal that as such. So uh, the Jackets will get one more playoff before the half ends there. Check that. That was... Uh, that was Glover. I don't know how I got uh, how I got 80 out of 17, but nonetheless, here we go. Back, Siska. Now he goes to Chandler. Complete, out of bounds at the 30. I'm confused. Well, four first down with 11 seconds on the clock. Of course, uh, with no. 11 seconds, you've got maybe enough time to run two more plays, but uh, nothing nothing long enough downfield. It's going to have to be something that's a breakaway for them to get any points on the board going into the half. I say it's going to be 10 nothing. The Jackets will be content to be 10 nothing. The defense has certainly done their job so far this evening. Oh, no question about it. Holding the Capitol and Thunder to no points, but putting seven on the boards themselves. Keep in mind, they'd have to get this ball down to about the 20 against the wind to really have a good shot at trying to connect on a field goal. But who knows? Last few plays have worked very well for them. You gentlemen, like four, going out for a pass right now. 11 minutes, 11 seconds, 11.8 eight, seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Whitey Siska looking, throws, incomplete. Stops the clock out of bounds with 6.8 remaining at the half. On a cool night here at Bleecker Stadium in the center of the capital city of New York State. Now you mentioned about the rich history of this stadium, Bill, and you know I had no idea, but uh, I always have no idea and when I hear you get going with your human encyclopedia. <laughs> feel that uh, always amazes me but uh, you know there is a rich history of the of this stadium and it's uh it was a great thing that they did build this and it's given a lot of people a lot of pleasure over the years and it continues to do so no question about it we've got uh, let's see we got glover and tony t-bone green wide left and let's see wide right we've got a couple of gentlemen looks like uh, dan chandler gabe young let's see what happens quick throw they're doing it again incomplete out of bounds stops the clock with three seconds interesting well it is interesting in the fact that he's throwing it's a long throw he's throwing wide across the field and uh you know a throw like that is very dangerous as far as a defensive back or defensive player being able to step in the, in the way of that throw and actually pick that ball off and take it the other way for a touchdown so it does surprise me a little bit that they're throwing these quick out particularly when there's so much uh, there's so little time on the clock that a quick out isn't going to do anything as far as putting you in field goal position it only seems to be to me to be like a, a risk and uh you know, the Jackets, although they have, you know, they do have a tremendous amount of confidence in their offense. Of course, their offense has done nothing to show them anything otherwise. Being able to put, the, put so many points on the board over the past few weeks, running the ball, throwing the ball, they have been basically unstoppable over the past few weeks, Bill. So. Well, I'm going to make a note of this and, and ask Tommy Mayer either tonight or, or perhaps next week uh, because right now with three seconds left, uh, if, if you want to go for it, yeah, then you put four guys out and you send them all down the field and... Uh, you know, you do the Doug Flutie thing, and uh, you hope for a good bounce. Run them all down and in, so that there's four receivers with a lot of defenders down there near the goal line, and hope for the bounce. And if if it gets picked off, so what? You get enough guys to stop it before it's a touchdown. Let's see what happens. Looks like I don't know. I'm. Uh, this is very interesting strategy. Again, I want to ask Tommy Mayer later. Whitey Sisk is back. He's looking. He's under some pressure. He throws. Dan Chandler's got it. You hear the buzzer in the background. Chandler's still motoring. Chandler's going to be brought down out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. It's over. At least the half is. 10 to nothing to score. The Green Jackets on top of the Capitol and Thunder. And uh, Chris, uh, not bad. No, I mean, we knew that we, there was a potential for it to be a very low-scoring or very close ball game. And uh, so far this half, it's done nothing to change my mind on that. We did see some turnovers that have actually lend, their, lend themselves to some of the points for the Jackets. But uh, so far this evening, we've got Green Jackets defense seven, Green Jackets offense three, Capital Land Thunder nothing. So sure. the Green Jackets defense has been once again dominant as they have been in past weeks. And uh, when you have a defense like that, like the old saying goes, and I know we repeat it over and over and over again, and we're gonna, I'm going to say it one more time, the defense is what wins championships. And right now, the Jackets have a defensive uh, unit that is a championship unit. So they're showing that with a 10 nothing lead and uh, they just are, are a solid unit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Green Jackets fans have to be happy. Green Jackets have a 10 to nothing lead. Capital Land's got to be very impressed, though. 
They're hanging in there tough with a well-developed offense, an offense that wasn't really there the last time these two teams met. They're seeing it for the first time, and they, meaning the Capital Land defense, is doing its job. I have to compliment both teams as well. If you remember the last game between these two, it was a chippy, pushy type of affair. This one, at least through the first half, has been played uh, on a first-class level, and there don't seem to be any problems out there right now. So with a 10 to nothing lead, the Green Jackets go into halftime. We're going to be back with third-quarter action right here on Channel 8. Thing lead in what's going to be a very close second half of football, Chris. Yeah, and there wasn't a lot of big surprises in the second and the first half, I'm sorry, other than the fact that the Jackets' offense really didn't seem to click or, or put it together, only able to muster up three points in the way of a Brian Bagstab field goal. But uh, the defense has been the, the talk of the game thus far, putting seven points on the board for the Jackets, but holding the Catalan Thunder to no points in the first half. Bradwell's kick, uh, it's kind of a tough one, right against a gust of wind, picked up at about the 20-yard line, still motoring, number 17, Dan Chandler. He loves to get a hold of that football. He's a gamer. Brings it out to about the 36-yard line. First in 10 Green Jackets. And the old adage of the first five minutes of the third quarter being such an important part of a close football game. We'll see if that holds true tonight. Always, always the first, yeah, in the first series. And the Jackets on offense, of course, looking to establish some momentum, a rhythm for their offensive unit and put some points on the board, albeit either three or seven. They prefer to get seven. But the Jackets offense definitely needs to get something going here as they come to the line, but Dan Chandler did a good job on that return, looking up the middle, finding nothing, and then looking down to the outside. That's why he's one of the best returners in this league. That looks like uh, Big Keith Sylvester in the backfield is full back right now, running backs, Wyatt and Grimes, and they're keeping it on the ground, of course. No big surprise. A lot of pushing and tugging and hauling. It was Andre Wyatt with the football. They tried to strip it from him, but not successful. The ball was blown dead. Second down, though, with a loss. Second down of about 12 yards to go for the Green Jackets. And I was commenting at halftime uh, about the uh, the fact that the running backs of the Green Jackets, and Wyatt in particular, um, not been tackled for a loss thus far in the first half. And that was the first, first time he runs the ball in the second half. Tackled for a loss, ends up second and loss of the Jackets. And uh, as we see, probably a passing down for Kevin Siska here. Kevin, blown back now. Big number 33. There we go. Kevin back. He throws. Ooh. Glover incomplete. Uh, another surprise, huh? Yeah, it was off of Glover's fingertips, but the reason why it was off his fingertips and not in his hands for the catch is as it hit his hands, I watched him, and he lifted his head and started to look to see where he was going to go or who was near him and who he had to try to elude prior to making that catch. Of course, as you know, as a receiver, the first thing you have to do is look that ball into your hands, then look where you're going to go with it afterwards. I think Glover was just anticipating the run a little bit after the catch there and uh, wasn't able to hang on to that ball. Some of the celebrities in the audience tonight, uh, Deputy Commissioner Al Dole and his wife Jane, Deputy Commissioner and uh, League Treasurer Mary Boyce, as well as former head coach of the Green Jackets, Joseph Bonviaggio. Here we go. 13 minutes, 41 seconds to go. Third down and about 13 yards to go for the Green Jackets. Siska under center. Whitey's back. He's looking. He's looking. He's throwing. Incomplete. And that pass was well defended by number 21 of the Thunder there as he was throwing, I believe, was a deep out route to, uh, to Dan Chandler. And, uh, you know, we've seen that so far this evening. Just those longer routes or those longer passes by the Jackets just haven't been, haven't been there. And, uh, the, you know, Kevin may think, of, may think better and, and try to go maybe with some smaller, shorter underneath route uh, to Glover. Maybe uh, Jenkins is the name we haven't heard at all that this, thus far this Good evening. Point. Maybe something over the middle to him in the shorter range. But now he's got a fourth down situation and uh, a definite punting situation, of course, for Dan Chandler. With the wind at his back, we should see a good punt here from Dan. Dan is back to punt. Of course, uh, number 11, Tony T-Bone Green, always comes in in these situations to block and call the signals on the punt for the Green Jackets. Fourth down at about 13. Don't expect a trick. Nice kick. Not much hang time. Picked up on the fly at the 32. Still motoring across midfield. Still on his feet. This one's hard to come down, down to about the 30-yard line. Beautiful run. Albany's got great field position. Well, and if there's any momentum to start this second half, it's all in the, uh, in the black and silver's favor, which would be the Capital Land Thunder. Uh, able to stop the Jackets on the, for, on the possession on offense, and now with that punt return, putting them in great field position at the 30-yard line of the Jackets to actually put some points on the board, their first points on the board of the evening. And uh, on that return, Sakima Grimes was the first one down there to set up for the tackle. Very, very close to a block in the back on Sakima, although I think it was just enough 
over his head. His head was in front of him, and he, they were able to, able to spring the return man there to get that long gain. Great field position. Ball right now at about the 30, 31-yard line. Isaac's the quarterback wearing number 12, keeping it on the ground. Cooper Wood up the middle, doesn't get far, snuffed after about a one-yard run. Yeah, maybe call that about two yards. A short two. Going against the wind right now, Capital Land. Very important for them to score and score a touchdown here. I talked uh, uh, with their kicker, Jason Bradwell. Asked him about that 51-yarder and why they didn't go for it. He says the leg is not the problem. Uh, the feeling is the blocking might not be there on special teams. They didn't want to take the risk of having it blocked and the Green Jackets getting the ball with good field position. Uh, so that was the reason, okay. I know that Bradwell has a leg to make that kick. Here we go. Wind gusting, you can hear it going through our microphones right now. Capital Land has yet to score tonight. Scored 13 against the Jackets the last time up at Eastfield. Green Jackets have not won a game in Bleecker in many a moon. Isaac's got time. Scrambles and throws on the run. Incomplete. Should have been caught. No question about it. Number six, Clinton, the intended receiver. Yeah, it should have been caught by Clinton as he kind of broke off his route. And Isaac kind of uh, was eluding the defense of the Jackets and rolling to his left. And it definitely should have been a catch by Maceo. He wasn't able to haul that one in. It brings up a third and long situation. The, uh, the Thunder, they are going to need to get a first down if they are going to put Bradwell in field goal position due to the fact that they are going into that, that gusty wind. Big third down right now. Isaac takes him out of the huddle. Of course, they're missing Lenny Noisette in the quarterback role this year. Lenny has played with Albany teams for what seems like decades. Actually, it was a couple of decades. A great gamer, a guy who can pull a game out on his own. Pitch, is it picked off or not? No, it actually short hopped right in front of uh, uh. Mo James there, but it does bring up a fourth down situation. Out of field goal range right now. Interesting, interesting call is what, uh, what we'll see here as we see uh, Isaacs come over and look like look to get a, actually a call or a signal, a play from the coach, and I believe they are going to go for it here on fourth down since they wouldn't gain much anyways with a punt. Yeah, so we will see point. a fourth down attempt here by good, the Thunder. Good point, and uh, you're absolutely right. If they boot this thing into the end zone, it comes out on the 20, the ball's at the 30 right now. Might as well take the extra opportunity to try to make something out of it, especially when you're down by... 10 points. A cold night in August. Relatively speaking. Isaacs, he's got a man in motion. Isaacs back. Decent blocking. He throws. Picked off this time. It's clean. Nicely done. Green Jackets with the football. Gamash, is it? No, it's actually Kenny Hack. It is Kenny. Okay. Great shot there by Kenny. Great call on defense, Kenny. Stayed at the line and then drifted back into coverage. I don't think Isaac was expecting a defensive end to be back there in coverage. Actually threw it right between Hackett's numbers, hit him between the 8 and the 8. Kenny, of course, has good hands. He's a good player, able to haul that one in for the turnover, for the interception. Jackets have the ball. We've got a penalty right now, and it's on the, on the, on the return. I don't believe it was prior to the interception. I do think there will be a change of possession. It will be offensive ball for the Jackets. But let's hang on a second here. No. Ooh. Boy, that's big. Right, so we will repeat fourth down, but it's fourth and a lot more makeable than it was on the last play. Well, they got a lot more options with that running back situation that they have in Albany. Ooh, this is big. This is very big. So fourth down at about three. Capital N with the ball. Negates that great interception by Kenny Hackett. Here we go. Will Isaacs keep it? No, he will not. And looks like they got first down and a little bit more. Wow, the penalties have hurt the Green Jackets tonight. Pen the penalties that the Jackets have had this evening have been very critical mistakes for them at a particular time. They couldn't have come at worse times for them. That was another one right there on the previous play. And, uh, and then, of course, a good job on, a, on the fourth down pickup by the Thunder. And they are now in definite uh, points position here, either a field goal or the touchdown if they're able to put it in the end zone. But no, that definitely was a, was a critical mistake for the Jackets with that penalty. First and 10, the ball right now, uh, right around the 15-yard line for Capital Land. Have yet to score so far, but with 10.37 to go in the third quarter, uh, they're knocking on the door. This could be a big break for them. Remember the last score between these two clubs, 17-13, to 13, the Green Jackets on top. 
This one's turning out to be a very similar game. Isaacs, number 12. Keeping it on the ground. He gets nowhere up the middle. And a quick give right up the middle, and it was completely stuffed out by the stuffed by the jacket line and the decent and the uh, linebacker unit, of course. And uh, just keeping them honest there with a the quick give. But the, uh, the the Thunder definitely have the so far the early momentum in the second half. It's up to the Jackets now to really uh, stand firm and at least put them put them in a position of a field goal attempt rather than a touchdown. Of course, a touchdown, and we've got a whole different ball game. Yeah, we sure do. Seven, and then it's a completely different. And remember, we're on the road, and we have not done well here at Bleecker Stadium. I remember the game two years ago. Last year, we played Albany twice, but both times at East Field. And that was disappointing, coming up with two very close losses. The year before, we played down here and almost pulled it out if it wasn't for the great Lenny Noyset at quarterback, who, although injured and uh, close to my age, was able to pull that one out by two points. Keeping it on the ground, nice spin move, small gain. It's going to be third down in about five. Actually, they're moving it back, aren't they? Right. We had Brian Northern from his linebacker position there able to make the tackle. And while we pause also, too, I'd like to mention that the linebackers tonight are sponsored by the UPS store. Mailboxes, etc. is now the UPS store in the Hannaford Plaza at 175 Broad Street in Glens Falls. Capital Land really would love to win this game. Uh, a win here would improve their league record to 2-3 and three and put them back on kind of a, a, a winning track, kind of a good momentum type thing here. Uh, they, of course, have to play uh, Green Mountain, but that will probably be a win in light of the fact that Green Mountain has not scored this year. Uh, they have home games against Scranton, a possible win. Home games against Orange County, that's going to be tough. Uh, but they can still put out a, pull out a great season, but they have to start right now. A loss here would pretty much relegate them to third place and traveling for all playoff games. Isaacs with a third down and nine. He's back. He's looking. He throws and uh, wasn't even close. No, that was an out, an out route. I believe he was trying to throw it to, uh, to Maceo Clinton, who actually, when he, when he broke that route off, wasn't even past the markers for a first down. He was well covered anyways. Had he made the catch, I don't think he would have been able to elude the tacklers, and it would have brought up a fourth down situation anyways. But that pass was just uh, the timing, the accuracy, into the wind, kind of knocked it down a little bit. It was a bit of a wobbly pass. Nothing happening there as we see a fourth down situation and a Jason Bradwell field goal attempt. Here we go. Bradwell with his first attempt of the evening. Uh, Multi-year veteran here with the Capital Land Thunder. Colgate University. And, of course, one game with Roanoke in Arena 2. This is a big kick for him. Placement's down. Kick is up. Got the, got the distance. Got the accuracy as well. And right through. So, basically, they did what they had to do. Well, they did what they had to do. They kept the momentum that they've had so far this half. And what it does bring up, though, is it's a one-score game now. Yep. And the Jackets are in a, really, they're, it's, the ball's in their court, so to speak. They're on their heels. It's on them now when they get on offense here after the kickoff to make something happen because, frankly, they haven't done that tonight on offense at all. This is a great, very good football team, the Capital A and Thunder. Uh, of course, they've come up uh, with a win against Scranton on the road, uh, but they've lost to the Green Jackets in a game that most people feel Albany should have won based on the performance on the field. Number two, uh, they had a close game against Orange County on the road, but came away with a loss. The only real disappointment in their season, the thing that really disappoints them, is their loss at home to the Lake City Stars. Uh, everybody had that one marked as an Albany win. It did not happen. Coach Mack and his team came down, and as Tommy Manny, the general manager and owner here of Capital Land, said, he says, Lake City came down, was well-prepared, and well-coached. And that's what made the difference. So here we go. So that's why this one has become so critical for Albany. It's important for the Green Jackets, but it's vital for Albany. Bradwell getting the, the ball teed up here as he gets ready to kick off after a successful field goal. 10 to 3. 8 16 remaining third quarter. Bill Callahan along with Chris Drennan. Referee blows his whistle. There we go. Jason's kick. Low, almost a line drive, takes a capital land bounce, rolls out of bounds at the 19-yard line, flags down. I don't know. That, uh, I don't think that was intentional, but what do you think? No, I don't think it was intentional. What he's trying to do, though, with the wind being like it is, is to drive the ball, keep it low, and, uh, you know, change the trajectory a little bit. But what that's also doing is making him do things that he's really not comfortable or familiar doing in practice throughout the week. So 
not characteristic of uh, Jason. He's not happy as he threw his feet to the sidelines. Not what he wanted to have happen. Of course, that puts the Jackets in outstanding field position, starting from their own 35-yard line. But uh, when you have a return man like Dan Chandler back there, starting from your own 35-yard line, in many cases, is a lot further back than what you do when Jan gets the ball in his hands and runs the ball out to the 40 or 50. So we're interested to see what the Jackets can do here on offense. Very important for them to string some first downs together and put some points on the board. And we got a full house backfield there. Grimes and Wyatt going to be doing the running chores. And just as I say that, big number 33. Keith Sylvester gets the handoff. Who in previous weeks, we've seen him carry the ball and do a very fine job of it. He runs very hard. And uh, rarely is he stopped for a loss, and he takes up about eight yards there. I think the Jacks are saying, look, we're tired of this. We're on offense. We haven't scored tonight like we want to, and we're going to run it down your throat. And when they put three guys in the backfield like that, I think that's kind of what they're saying. And so far on that play, that's exactly what they did. And you're absolutely right, keeping in mind that the only touchdown was scored by number 25, Damon Walker, picking up a fumble and running it in for a touchdown. Bagstad with the extra point and the field goal. Second down, two yards to go for the Jackets. There we go. Whitey's holding on to it. Whitey cuts in the middle. Ooh, dangerous run for a quarterback. It's a first down and more, but uh, there were risks involved. Right, but we've seen Kevin Cisco do that many times before. He's got very good judgment on when to keep the ball and when to pitch it. Of course, he opted to keep it there and pick up a first down. But uh, something, a new wrinkle that we're seeing from the Jackets right now on offense. We haven't seen much. We haven't seen any of the option ball so far this evening. Now we're seeing some of that. Maybe that's something we intend, we, we plan on seeing the rest of the half. They worked on that play. We'll see what they can do here. I think they're going from, we're going to run from a full house back to once again, Bill. And they want to they do some momentum grabbing right now. They haven't really had it since the second quarter. Let's see what they do with the football. Again, Whitey Siska, a tough individual, but built very differently than, let's say, a Ryan Venna, who quarterback for, for the Conquest, who's he's a little more squat, a little bulkier, and can take the hits a little bit more. He always worried about Ryan, but every time he got up, even more tougher than, than when he went down. But right. I, I, I worry about Whitey when he gets hit by some of these big guys. Here we go. Whitey throws. He gets it to Gabe Young. Incomplete. Well defended, I might add. Yeah, yeah. The defensive back, or the cornerback, I believe, number two, came up and met Gabe right at the time of the ball that got there. It was a great defensive play on that. And that's kind of what we've seen all, all night this evening is, is uh, the defensive backs have been right there with the receivers of the of the. Uh, of the jackets and uh, just you know breaking it up or, or you know knocking it away or making the tackle immediately so we'll see uh we'll see with the second and, and ten situation here once again we'll see if kevin Siska did they opt to run the ball because they've had much success running it tonight credit travis gaddy number two for capital in on that last play here's whitey with a big second down pitch out nice recovery on the pitch out by andre wyatt gain of a solid five It'll be third down and five for the Jackets. Well, the right choice was to pitch the ball. Just <laughs> the pitch was a little bit behind Wyatt, and Wyatt had to reach back in one hand. That was a great job by Wyatt, like you said, to haul that pitch in and gain five yards on it. But uh, I think the option, option play is, is a good job by, by, uh, by Tom Merritt to actually uh, maybe mix things up a little bit on offense and maybe catch uh, the Thunder in something that they hadn't expected to see. And so far, they've been able to move the ball that way, although we have a third about six situation here. I would be very surprised if I didn't see Kevin Siska throw the ball in this play. Uh, as well, I would as well. Uh, Dan Chandler has been uh, very successful in the first half catching balls. Let's see what happens here. Watch for the quick slant maybe to, uh, no? Ooh, pitch out again. Dangerous stuff, but it works. Still on his feet, still motoring down to the 35, 34 a, yard line. A big, big pickup by Andrew White as you see him pump his fist. He's really, he's really pumped up and psyched on that play. But we were expecting a pass, and I think... Everyone else was, too. The Jackets decided to go with the run. It was a good call, able to pick up the first down. Andre Wyatt, again, I was talking with uh, former head coach Joe Bonviaggio at halftime. He concurs that Wyatt is having a tremendous year, much improved player, and uh, dur much more durable this year. He's not being plagued with the injuries, knock on wood, uh, so far this season. It's great to see him uh, week in and week out delivering to this offense. Four minutes, 38 seconds to go. Clock continues to run. Third quarter from Bleecker Stadium. Bill Callahan and Chris Drennan. Green Jackets with the ball. Whitey Sisko looking for a quick pass. Now looking deep. Gabe Young's got the ball. He runs in, standing up for a touchdown. Green Jackets' first offensive touchdown of the evening. No flags. And right now, it is 16-3. Green Jackets, 
And that was big, Chris. Well, it was huge, and that's what we're, that's what the Jackets are used to doing, and that's what we're used to seeing with Kevin Siska making the long passes downfield. Did a great job on the pump fake, and you had Gaddy on the defensive back there on the corner defending Gabe Young, watching the quarterback, and he bit on that pump fake just enough to get to let Gabe get loose for an easy score. And that's exactly what the Jacket needed, need, Jackets needed to gain the, regain the momentum. And now they're up by two scores. 16 to 3 right now, looking to tack the extra point on by Bagstad to make it 17. And it's interesting, Bagstad continues in the point after situation, so we're not flopping like we did last week. Here we go. Bagstad getting ready. This would be his fifth point of the night. One field goal and his second point after. Movement there of placement by Dan Chandler. He gets the snap, places it. The kick is up. Yes. Tough angle. I'm not confident of it. And, of course, the goal post is a little bit lower on the top. So uh, we wait for the official signal. 17 to 3, 425 remaining, 426 remaining, actually. And uh, Green Jackets uh, needed that one very much. Oh, they needed it very much. The offense, of course, has been very confident over the past few weeks. And I think they were a little bit shaken up in the fact that they weren't able to click, get things clicking and do what they're used, to, they're used to doing. And that was the first case right there, or the first situation where they're able to get back to... Uh, to old, the old ways and, and get a, a pass downfield, which you're used to doing, and Gabe Young made a nice catch and hauled it into the touchdown. Of course, while we have pause here for the kickoff, I am going to mention, too, that the wide receivers and tight ends tonight are sponsored by McCann's Pharmacy, your hometown full-service pharmacy on the park in Hudson Falls, flea delivery seven days a week, and mentioned receivers on that play, while the quarterback, Kevin Siska, did a great job. And once again, too, the quarterback tonight is sponsored by the Post Star, reaching 100,000 readers every day from the Capital District to the Adirondacks. And yeah, Bill, uh, great job by the, by the uh, Jackets. Now they've got the momentum back again, and uh, the defensive unit has played well. They can shut the Thunder down on this next offensive series for them, and the Jackets are well on their way to actually seizing this game and keeping the momentum and taking home a win into the bye week, which is what they want to do. Albany with only three points against the Jackets tonight. Uh, Albany happens to be the only team in the Empire League this season that has scored more than seven uh, against the Jackets. That includes the replacement uh, team against Long Island that game. Nice kick by Vinny, uh, which uh, goes out of bounds on the goal line touchback. It'll be first and 10 at the 20 for Capital Land. Yeah, and that's, that's really important when you, can, when you can start a team out on the 20-yard line. It was a well-placed kick with this win, and uh, into the corner there, and able to get into the end zone for the touchback, starting on the 20, and uh, putting them in a position to go 80 yards with a tough defense. It's hard to do for anybody, but with the Jackets defense the way they're playing, it's almost next to impossible. So good job by Vinny on that kickoff. Now, keep in mind, though, the last time Albany had the football, they were able to get it down there into field goal range, but they were helped a couple of times um, by some pesky penalties. Let's see what uh, Capital Land can do right now. Again, their offense just hasn't gelled yet. A couple of new quarterbacks on the roster as these gentlemen get used to this level of play. It does take time. This is not an overnight thing. And, uh, again, a little bit more practice uh, the coach would like to have. It's tough to do. Everybody's got jobs and education and families to take care of. But Capital Lane continues to improve as the season goes on. 426 remaining here. Third quarter action from Bleeker. And yes, they're keeping it on the ground. Throw the ball on the ground. And let's see, it looks like the Jackets may have recovered it though. Wow, this, this would be a gigantic turnover. Talk about a huge momentum boost right now for the Green Jackets. And uh, look for a, yeah, an attempt here at very quick blood by the Green Jackets. Uh, I bet you they're going to go right for the end zone. And preliminary indications, I think it was Anthony Bignola on that recovery. Uh, seemed to be the man who picked that ball up and uh, got that turnover. I'm not sure who forced it, although someone was able to reach in there before the running back was able to cross the line of scrimmage and strip that ball loose. That's the kind of Jackets defense that they play. They play a very swarming, a very aggressive defense, which causes turnovers. We've seen it all season long, and we've seen it once again. Man, oh, man, huge for the Green Jackets. So the Green Jackets right now... Uh, Feeling pretty good. Now, what they want to do is stay focused and ram this one in quickly. Of course, that's not an easy thing to do against this defense. Keeping it on the ground. Whitey's keeping it. Whitey Siska's got room. Whitey Siska, one man to beat. He spins. Out of bounds at about the four. And that was Jeff Thurman saving the touchdown there, being able to tackle Kevin Siska before he got in the end zone. But he did a great job of running there. Of course, when you're a receiver converted back to a quarterback, you know you've got ability to run with the ball, and that's exactly what Kevin Siska has. So when he has that ball in his hands and he runs with it, he's not a quarterback running with the ball necessarily. He's a wide receiver running with the ball. He did a very good job as a wide receiver, a fine wide receiver with RPI. He set records 
with them. So it's very dangerous when he has the ball in his hands as a runner. Here we go. Siska first down and goal to go. Call it about the five yard line. Green Jackets trying to score and score again quickly. 3.14 remaining. Clock continues to run in the third quarter. Keeping it on the ground. Still running. Still spinning. Should be a touchdown. Yes, it is. Number 22. Beautiful job. Yeah. Sakima Grimes running hard up the middle. Um, virtually almost untouched. And uh, that's doing an outstanding job. Once again, by the Green Jackets line, offensive line tonight, these running backs just aren't doing it on their own. The line of the Jackets has, been done, has done a great job, able to spring them, just give them enough of a gap for them to get through there. And once again, Sakima Grimes exploits that and is able to get into the touchdown. A big touchdown for the Jackets. Now they've got a, 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 a comfortable cushion, although anything can happen here, but it's definitely much more comfortable than what they had going into to the uh, half. Here we go, Bagstad trying to add a 24th point to the Green Jackets side of the board. Let's see what happens as Chandler remains the holder. Snap, fairly decent, kick is up. Yeah, looks good. And it is 24 to three. And that's a break open type of score right now for the Green Jackets, especially the way the defense seems to be holding tonight. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And once again, the defensive unit of the Jackets has, has just been nothing short of outstanding. Doing, I mean, doing everything they can possibly do to set things up for the offensive unit. Now the offensive unit is saying, hey, we're going to return the favor, and now we're going to start scoring some points. So now they're starting to get that momentum and starting to click on all cylinders, which is what we've seen in past weeks. This is the Jacket team that we saw last week and the week before and the week before that. that no question about it. You start stringing together these wins. Now keep in mind, other than that 21 to nothing anomaly against Springfield from the North American League, this has been an awesome year for the Green Jackets. Uh, Green Jackets so far giving up three points tonight. Uh, giving up seven points last week, seven points the week before, three points the week before that, seven points the week before that. I mean, that's absolutely awesome, unheard of. And, uh, and the offense finally beginning to deliver as well over the last four games. Right, and I'm not sure what the stats are within, throughout the league, throughout the Northern and Southern Division, but I would have to think that scoring defense the Jackets have to be ranked number one. I couldn't imagine any defense out there allowing less points than the Jackets are. Yeah, I agree with that totally. Here we go. Kicks up there. It's a decent one. Of course, the wind at the back goes out of bounds. Touchback. And it's uh, first and 10 at the 20 for Capital Land once again. Yeah, and then getting back to the offensive unit of the Green Jackets, I'm not sure where they rank as well in the north and the, and the south, but I would have to think scoring offense they have to be right up there one or two um it would surprise me if they weren't so when you're ranked in the top one or two on offense and scoring and one or two in defense points allowed yeah i mean uh, your record's going to be indicative of that and the jackets record is so they're definitely putting it together at least start it, thus far this season all all things that you, all pieces that you have to put together to create that championship puzzle the jackets are doing green jackets of course will clinch second place in the Southern Division with a win tonight. And the reason I say that, they win tonight, they'll be 5-0. and oh. Even if they go 5-3, and three, the best Albany can do is 5-3 and three with the Green Jackets winning the tiebreaker. So here we go. Isaacs throwing the ball, almost got his man, almost picked off. Good job by Mo James over there. And we had some contact prior to that, to that pass coming down, but uh, the referee said incidental contact, which was a good call, let them play and didn't throw the flag. So many times you see you see uh, these, uh, these, um, you know, these referees thinking, okay, someone fell down prior to the ball getting there. I'm going to throw a flag on somebody. And they just don't let the game be played. That was a good job by the referee there just to let him play. Keep it wide open. Keep it moving. Now, Orange County does not play tonight. Orange County with one loss, the loss coming against the Green Jackets. So they're still fully in contention for first place in the division. But it's either going to be Orange County or Glens Falls, the Green Jackets, rather if this score holds. Green Jackets seem very loose and relaxed out there right now. They're keeping it on the ground, though, Albany is. Spin move, brought out of bounds by Gamash at about the 19. Well, we've seen that a few other times this evening with a tried to run Maceo Clinton around the end. And with, with minor success, a couple times he was able to gain a few yards, but uh, the Jackets, once again, like I mentioned, when they do may have some success, the opposing teams do, they figure out a way to shut it down, and once again, they did with Gamash. What you had there is you had faking the blitz. You had uh, Gabe Young popping in there. Then you had uh, 
You had Damon Walker getting up in there and then bouncing back out into coverage. But what it's doing is it's just mixing things up enough to where Isaac really doesn't know what to do, even if he is calling an audible. And he is keeping the offensive unit of the Thunder confused, and that's exactly what they've done all evening. Right now, Capital Land comes out of the huddle. Very important third down. Third down and 11 right now. They're going against the wind. They're down 21 points. 2.05 remaining third quarter Fort Bleecker Stadium in Albany. Isaac under pressure. Gamash trying to get to Isaac. Isaac gets it off and gets it to his receiver. Nice job. Not enough for a first down, but nice job avoiding disaster. Right. I mean, that was making something out of nothing there because I know Isaac was running for his life and the, uh, the receiver's routes had already been run out. And that was just a case of where Maceo, uh, uh, Gary was just looking to help him out and actually come and help out his, his quarterback. And we've seen him do that other times this evening. Of course, when you do that, you usually do it in front of the yard markers for the first down, and it happened that way. Now it's fourth down, a punting situation in the backup for the Thunder, not what they wanted to see happen. One of the other games going on tonight is Scranton at Ottawa to face Montreal. A win by Scranton keeps them alive in the playoff hunt. A loss by Scranton pretty much rules them out of playoff contention. That game was probably over by now since it started early due to the power situation. As Jason Bradwell's punt is a decent one, picked up by Gabe at the 40. Gabe spins out of a tackle. He's at the 35. He's still running backwards and sideways. Nice block there. Gabe gets out of bounds at the 42-yard line. And we have a flag on we the had, play. We had Night Train Jones there with just a deep cleating block to Ooh. spring Gabe around the end there. And... Then, and then we had Gamash saying, hey, you can do that. I can do it better. <laughs> They're doing the same thing to number 80 and just flattening him as we hear gas from, gas from the crowd. We did some flags go down in the play. I'm not quite sure what they called him in that other than the fact that maybe they called Jones for uh, over, over uh, uh, you know, <laughs> exerting himself and celebrating a little too much after that. But those were definitely two haymaker type of hits on those two guys. The guys did a good job just to get up from those plays and get to their own sideline. But uh, absolutely unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, it was. You can tell Albany right now is feeling a little subdued. They're not out of this game by any means. We have a long way to go, but certainly it's not going their way. Glens Falls, the Green Jackets rather, right now are very, very loose and excited and feel like they have it under control. Yeah, I mean, those are just blocks, folks, but when, when that happens, it's more of a, a, a morale uh, deflator. It really, you know, when you see your own guy just get leveled like that, but not only your own guy, and you, but it happened to two of your own guys. Yeah. Uh, it just it just deflates your morale a little bit, and, and uh, you know, nothing else. That's what it does. But they are just blocks. But boy, those were some incredible blocks. Tough hitting out there, folks. Siska still in at quarterback. His team with a comfortable 21 point lead, but it's not over yet. Whitey back. He's throwing. Oh, boy. Larry Alberts, incomplete. Yeah, it was intended for Alberts, but uh, really was kind of a weak attempt there. Kevin Sisk was rolling to his left. Once again, that's the side when you roll to as a right-handed quarterback. It's very hard to throw across your body and get anything on it, and that's what happened right there with Kevin. Just under threw it to Alberts, although Alberts didn't have a whole lot of open room to run with the ball had he made that catch anyway. Interesting. I remember Terry Bradshaw talking about working on weaknesses, and he said, my critics always said I could never throw left. He said, so what I did was I spent all my extra time after practice throwing left, throwing left, throwing left. And he was just talking about working on weaknesses in general, but it's something I've always used in my own life. You, 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 you segregate your weaknesses, you find out what they are, and then you spend that extra time on them, hoping to bring that weakness at least up to a neutral level so that some of your strengths could take over and pull you into a winning situation. I always, always like that. I always like Bradshaw's approach to life, and he always freely talked about his own experiences, which I think is very valuable. That's a very good philosophy to have. Of course, Kevin Sisk at the quarterback position hasn't showed many weaknesses no, no. at all this year. But for any quarterback to actually roll to your left if you're a right-handed quarterback and oh. throw across your body, it, that would be one no, of them. No, it's tough. And, and, and we all have those things in our life, and uh, you have fun dealing with them. The officials uh, chatting over a few things right now, just making sure I think they're all on the same page is what they wanted to make sure. And that's always a good move by the official. No, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't meant to focus in on uh, Whitey, but uh, quarterback to quarterback, number 12 to number 12, and then left, left, and it all came together in my complex little mind. Hope you're enjoying this one, folks. Green Jackets right now with a comfortable lead, but it's not over yet. They're impressing us, though. Quick pass. Is it complete? Young Gabe Young says it is. Officials do concur. 
Yeah, and I think they made the right call. I do think Gabe caught it, although they were lo Capital Land was lobbing for an incompletion there as we hear the the, uh, the buzzer 40 into the third quarter go off. And uh, quite a quarter for the Green Jackets, Bill. Yeah, impressive quarter. I mean, they could have they could have lost the grasp early on, and the momentum was swinging to Albany very quickly. They grabbed it back and took control of the football game now. And now with 15 minutes left, it's the Green Jackets to lose. Right. No, you're absolutely right. Having the lead that they have, a three-score lead. But what we saw in the third quarter was a bit of a letdown, like we saw last week in the third quarter. Yeah, and tell you what, folks, uh, one quarter left in the books, 24 to 3 the score. Green Jackets on top back after this. It's the Neymar. Brisk evening here at Bleecker Stadium in Albany. Bill Callahan along with Chris Drennan. One more quarter left. Green Jackets versus Capital Land. Green Jackets with the lead, and they have the football, and they're keeping it on the ground. Looks like a broken play to me. Yep, the ball went to the ground on the exchange, and, and Kevin Sisko got knocked away from it. The ball did fall uh, onto the line of scrimmage of the Thunder, and they were able to fall on the ball. So we do have a turnover by the Green Jackets. Wow. Here. Well, here's, here's the big opportunity for Capital Land. You get the ball, you've got to score, you've got to score a touchdown, and you've got to do it fairly quickly. This can't be up the middle, up the middle, running four or five minutes off the clock for one score. It's just not going to work. There's less than 15 left. Yeah, no, they definitely need to score quickly. Uh, need to get some sizable gains here as we've uh, got a little bit of tempers flaring on the sidelines here of the Thunder. But they're sorting it out, and we're going to go on here with the next play. But no, you're right, Bill. They do have to get something and make something happen quickly and then try to force a turnover. A turnover would help them greatly as far as getting back into this game. Green Jackets right now, if they can hold on, it'll be their first win at Bleecker. Let's say since at least the early 1990s, okay? And I'll review that with you in a moment. Right now, Isaac's got him. He's keeping it on the ground. Ball's loose. Do the Green Jackets have it this time? Well, yes, they do. And we have Brian Northern with the fumble recovery on a missed exchange there from Isaac to the running back. And uh, there you go. Right yeah. back. And, you know, here you go. Thank you very much. And we'll return the favor. So, you know, we'll just, <laughs> just a little quick pause there in the Jackets offense. They're back on the field now. And they're back right where they started again uh, to start the quarter. But, yeah, that was a critical mistake for the Thunder in getting back into this game. That's not what they wanted to see happen. The Green Jackets, of course, were out of the league in 1997. They played in the New York League, did not play Albany. 98, two games against Albany. Lost both of them, including the Bleecker game here. 99, lost here, won at East Field. 2000, Albany out of the league. 2001, we lost both. Here we go, Whitey Cisco with the football. Boy, oh boy, he's holding on to it. Whitey's under pressure and in trouble. And a big loss, a loss probably of 12 or 13. Going to make it uh, second down and forever. Right, well, hot on his heels there was number 41, and we don't have a name for that number, but uh, unable to get him. But then, of course, number 69, I believe it was Devin Jones, and he was able to come in there and then clean up for 41, who I wish we could mention his name to give him the credit that he was due, but uh, able to get into Siska there, and Siska did a good job just to hang on to that ball and not force a turnover. My pen was borrowed at the time. Number 41, believe it or not, is the cousin of our number 41, R Rudy Jason Johnson. So they're cousins, and they both have number 41, and they're playing against each other. And I was introduced to him, and my apologies. I am sorry. It just flew right out of my head here. Second down at about 21, 22 yards. Whitey's back. They're keeping it on the ground, which kind of surprises me. And, uh, boy, everybody in on the scrum there. Uh, it's going to be third down and about 18. Yeah, it was an inside give to Keith Sylvester. A little bit surprised that they did that, but... Uh, one thing they don't want to do right now is, is give a turnover. I mean, they want to make Capital and Thunder take this game. I mean, it's, it's the, the Green Jackets game to lose here, and uh, the Thunder is going to have to make something happen. But if the Jackets don't send the ball, it's going to be awfully hard for them to take this game. Absolutely right. And uh, the Green Jackets right now, if they can wrap this one up, look forward to a week off, and then preparation for the big rematch against Orange County, uh, a team that the Green Jackets... Uh, handled quite nicely at East Field. Unfortunately, that 32-point uh, margin will be remembered by Orange County and be used as a motivator to get that team ready for a home game against the Green Jackets. So uh, that one could be tough. Third down and 18. Whitey's got the ball. Whitey's being pursued. 
Whitey Sisk has got a man behind him, and he's pushed out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down and a solid 20. And that was a great job by the Capital and Thunder on that series to basically shut down the Jackets offense. Doing a great job on that last play there to actually cover the receiver so well. Kevin Siski, even though he was rolling and looking for a receiver, had time to find one. Just unable to find him because of the great job by the defensive backs of the Thunder. And Kevin Siska had to eat that ball for the sack. Fourth and very long punting situation for the Jackets. And again, our thoughts and best wishes go out to the general manager of the Green Jackets, Mr. Jim Willick, uh, who is recuperating from knee replacement surgery. The operation is, is treacherous enough. Uh, it is the work in getting everything back in order again, the rehab, that's uh, probably even tougher. And we miss you, James, and uh, hope you're enjoying this telecast tonight. You should be happy with a 24-3 lead. Dan Chandler's kick. It, uh, ooh, that wind grabbed that one, huh? It like it hit a stone wall up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, if you don't get the right right spin on the ball, if you don't actually turn it over, and it kind of catches like a like a parachute almost, and just throw, it gets thrown right back down, and that's what happened right there. And then, of course, took a very favorable bounce, bounce for the Thunder. Puts them in, in decent field position. They didn't gain a whole lot on that punt by Chandler. But uh, while, we, while we go into change of possessions here, too, I'd like to mention, too, once again, that the quarterback position tonight is sponsored by the Post Star, reaching 100,000 readers every day from the Capital District to the Adirondacks. And we'd like a quick reminder that all football at home are sponsored by the Pro and Mo Sports Shop, your preferred supplier of awards, plaques, and trophies for 27 years, 151 Broadway in Fort Edwards. And right now, Capital Land with the football. Isaacs is back. He's looking. Quick throw. Got his man. Nicely done, and that should be good enough for a first down. Getting a little chippy out there the last... Uh, last few minutes of play number nine was the receiver on that one and uh, moving down oh Keely Duncan uh, Keely Duncan that's right I like that first name that character first down and 10 yards to go right now for Capital Land plenty of time left on the clock but uh, they're gonna have to use it wisely to make up a 21 point deficit clock continues to run under 10 minutes here Bill Callahan and Chris Drennan as we follow uh, what's turning out to be a awesome an awesome season for the Green Jackets. Keeping it on the ground. Nice run. Probably a gain of almost five, between four and five, depending on where the officials place it. It's about four and five yards, but what you have right now with nine minutes and 37 seconds and ticking on the clock is a situation where if you're the Capital and Thunder, I know you've been getting all your plays off well within the play clock, but now you've got to treat it as if the play clock has been, has been sped up or, or actually, you know, shortened on you and you want to get your plays off even sooner if you're not going to go in a no-huddle situation. But you want to really get to that line of scrimmage and run your play fast. They aren't doing that right now. They're kind of just walking the line of scrimmage like they have the luxury of a, of a lead right now. They need to get in the end zone. They need to get in the end zone quick. You're absolutely right. Second down, six and a half yards to go for Capital Land. They've got the ball on the Green Jackets, 35. Isaac's back. He's looking, throwing on the run, and picked off. Nice pick by guess who? Number 25, Damon Walker. He's still in bounds, one man to beat. Damon gets pulled out of bounds at the 11 or 12 yard line. Beautiful interception, fantastic run. Yeah, outstanding run by, uh, by Damon. He just drifted back into coverage, read Isaac all the way, and made that pick. And then of course, when Damon makes a pick, you've got to watch him because he's a threat to go all the way. One man to beat, was, able, was run down from behind, but uh, I mean, gosh, what a great job by Damon. Damon's been everywhere tonight. Wherever the ball's been, Damon's been. If it's been in the backfield, Damon's been there. Back in coverage, Damon's been there with a pick earlier in the evening. And once again, he has a pick there and runs it back for a sizable gain. So Damon's been just about everywhere. He's been swarming. In fact, I, sometimes I think I've seen number 25, maybe two or three of them out there on one play. Damon's been outstanding tonight. Well, Damon is running a clinic on defense tonight. As I take a look at the Albany sidelines, a uh, little discussion among the players there, unfortunately, as frustration has broken out. Looks like we have uh, a change of quarterback. Green Jackets with the ball. Number 11, Tony Green. At quarterback, we have a flag on the play. Good second and third effort. And close to a first down. Way over the I'm going to venture a guess and probably say that it's against the Green Jackets and probably something like a block in the back. Okay. Something like that. I may be wrong, but when he reverses directions like that, he catches, you catch players going the opposite way, and that usually leads to block in the back. And we'll see if it is indeed that call. Tony Green, we've seen him in a little bit at fullback. We've, of course, seen him in on the punting team where he does the blocking. 
And now we see him in, in his backup quarterback role. Very important part of this football team uh, in his spirit, in his leadership, in his ability to cheerfully play any role that he's asked. And there's not that many guys on any team no, that can do yeah, what he can do. No, absolutely not. You know, you've got great depth with the Green Jackets, but what you have with that depth are guys that are not selfish. You have team guys, and you have to have a team if you want to go anywhere and win championships. If you're not a team and you're a bunch of individuals out there, you'll only go so far, but you'll always usually end up with a disappointing season with a loss that you don't expect to lose because you aren't a team. I've seen it happen all too many times. I've been part of it in many times. Well put, my friend. First down and forever for the Jackets. They're keeping it. Tony's keeping it. He's driving hard. Nice gain. Seven, eight, nine. And it, it's getting a little tough out there. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of extracurricular stuff after the whistle. We're having, you're seeing the referees have to blow the whistle, you know, four and five times at the end of a play. But, you know, that's what we've always seen between Capital Land and the Green Jackets. So nothing unusual. It's just unusual that we haven't seen much of that until this part of the game tonight. I expected it to be a little bit more intense to begin with, which actually was a lot cleaner game from, from uh, beginning until now. The Green Jackets, of course, trying to knock down another wall. That being winning in Bleecker Stadium, something they haven't done in a long time. Uh, their first win against Orange County, of course, came a few weeks ago. That was very big for them. A win against Scranton, something that hadn't happened in a number of years. That came uh, last week, and now hopefully a win, if this holds, at Bleecker will be another great milestone for this team. Tony gets nailed as he's throwing the ball, and it is picked off in the end zone. Flicked off, still in the end zone, and the officials blow the whistles. But I think the interception will stand. We'll have to see. Yeah, I think it will. Tony was rolling to his right and saw, I believe that was intended. Was that intended for Gabe Young down there in the right. corner of the end zone? I think it was Gabe. And uh, Tony just kind of threw it up there, a 50-50 ball, hoping that Gabe would be the one to come up with it. Of course, he wasn't. And then the man that made the interception looked to pitch it back in the end zone. I, I, I would have to say that that wasn't a good decision, but it was a good decision by the man that it was pitched to to take a knee and take the ball in the 20. Yeah, that was that, that was a smart move on his part. No question about it. So now Capital Land, with 6 minutes and 47 seconds, has to score. Has to score very quickly. And we're almost, with three touchdowns down, you almost have to start considering onside kicking if you do happen to score. Uh, we're at that point, especially the way Albany's offense runs. A lot of runs a lot of runs inbounds. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Capital Land with the football. The last game between these two clubs, 17 to 13 win by the Green Jackets, and they're keeping it up the middle and on the ground as usual. And that, of course, number four with the football. And once again, we have another little bit of pushing and shoving after the whistle with A.G. Longmire, number 78 of the Capital Land Thunder. Of course, the referee stepping to break that up, no foul. But, uh, yeah, you've got a team in Capital Land that just running the ball out of necessity because they haven't been able to get anything really done much through the air, so they have to go with kind of what's working for them, although really they're going to have to go to the air if they want to even have any, uh, any thoughts of uh, getting back into this game and pulling this one out. I don't think they're ready to concede the game just yet. Second down and a long four right now to go with Capital Land. Remember, all, many players from both sides of this football know each other very well, grew up in the same neighborhoods, played in the same schools. Here we go, keeping it on the ground, still moving. Cooper Woods running. Cooper Woods got one man to beat. He's brought down at the 35-34 yard line. That's actually, I think that was yeah. Mayfield. Clinton. You're, a, you're actually one. right. It was Clinton, Mayfield not Cooper Woods. Boy, and, he was uh, moving. Yeah, and you're seeing why that they like to run Clinton around the end there, because if he can turn that corner, I mean, he, he's got some speed. He might be the quickest guy out here, at least on that particular play, he was definitely the quickest guy I've seen. And uh, he was able to be run down by good pursuit angles taken by the Jackets defense. But he definitely has some speed to burn. Unbelievable speed. He got by a good six green jackets and only had one man to meet uh, deep for a touchdown and uh, couldn't quite make it yeah. there, but great speed. And, and all for not due to a penalty. Unbelievable. Penalty, so frustrating for both teams tonight, actually. But that negates a tremendous game, which uh, probably would have set them up for a few different things here on offense. Now they're going to have to go all the way back and try this one again. Wow. Five minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Fourth quarter here. Bill Callahan and Chris Drennan. The Green Jackets uh, continue on their march to another Empire Football League championship game. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but a win here tonight would clinch second place, therefore home playoff game at least the first round. Here we go. 
We got a quarterback change. Ball batted down and almost intercepted. Coming in right now for Capital Land is number 14, Mike Carafarno. We saw him at the other game as well. Both of these quarterbacks played against the Green Jackets at East Field in July. And Carafano is not the biggest guy in the world, so when he was rolling to his right there, you had Kenny Hackett in front of him, able to knock that ball down just due to the fact that I think Carafano can't get that ball released over his head high enough to get it over Kenny Hackett's outstretched arm. And if Kenny did a good job, was able to knock that ball down. But yeah, we were seeing, in fact, uh, Carafano actually may be the shortest guy out there on the field right now. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. He seems to be... Uh, that 5'8", 5'7". Yeah, well, we, we know that you can be 5'8", or 5'7", maybe 5'9". Yes. In one particular individual I'm thinking about <laughs> in the NFL and still get the job done. Yes, that is true. That is very true. Here we go. Carafano brings him out of the huddle. He's under center. 5'18", remaining. He's got to get his team in the end zone. Keep this one alive. Long count. Back. Looking. Throwing. Caught. Was it caught inbounds? Yeah, they're saying it, it was. was. It was a completion. He paid for his completion. And once again, <laughs> insert number 25 here, and I will, and that was Damon Walker mm. with the tackle, but not just the tackle, a hard hit. I could hear, hear it, almost feel it all the way up here as number nine for the Capitol Thunder comes off the field and is stretching out his calf after that hard hit by Damon Walker. And that's Duncan, of course, wearing number nine. Capital Land, probably the last year we'll call him Capital Land. Next year, I think everybody's kind of hoping we call them the Albany Metro Mallers. It'd be great to get back to that. And hopefully they can kind of revive some of those great years in the Empire League and the Eastern League and the Seaboard League that the Metro Mallers operated in. Here we go. First and 10 right now, Capital Land. Carafano, the quarterback. He wears number 14. Second quarterback of the night for the Thunder. Not afraid to take a long count. Boy, he throws that one up in the air for grabs. Oh, actually, that almost that really should have been caught. Well, when you have a guy like Mayfield Clinton with the speed he has, and it was just evidence right there as he ran away from actually Damon Walker on that play, is uh, uh, a situation where if you just get the ball up and let it carry, he's going to run underneath it. And he, he just darn near did on that play as he's outstretched arms was just just a little bit too short to catch that and haul, catch that ball and haul it in, but. Uh, Clinton, once again, showing his great speed that he does have. Has there been any play on defense that Damon Walker's name has not been mentioned tonight? Unbelievable performance. He is everywhere. And, of course, he knows a lot of guys on this Capital Land team, so he's making a statement to them. The Green Jackets are taking is. a timeout. It stops the clock with 4.05 remaining. Great opportunity for us to mention some of these sponsors including the Pro and Mo Sports Shop, your preferred supplier of awards, plaques, trophies for 27 years, located at 151 Broadway in Fort Edwards. And sponsoring the linebackers tonight is the UPS store. Mailboxes, etc. is now the UPS store in the Hannaford Plaza at 175 Broad Street in Glen Falls. And, of course, running back, sponsored by Luis's Italian Bistro, homemade Italian favorites, great food, great prices. Stop Glen Falls. Call 745-5055. Wide receivers and tight ends, sponsored by McCann's Pharmacy, your hometown full-service pharmacy on the park in Hudson Falls, free delivery seven days a week. And finally, the offensive line of the Green Jackets, sponsored by Axis Technology and Luzerne Webworks. Everything you need for computers in your business, helping you help yourself, 654-5444. Here we go, Capital Land, with a big second down situation. Carafano, this time from the shotgun, snapped over his head. He's being pursued, and he is brought down hard. Uh, he never had a chance to buy number 25. Five. Who's that again? Damon? Uh, da it's, it's a new player out there we yes. mentioned before tonight. I think his name is Damon Walker. Unbelievable. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, he's everywhere. But uh, that pass, uh, the uh, snap actually did sail over Carafano's head, being 5'7". You know, if he was six feet tall, he might have been able to get his hand on that. But that was just a high snap. Any quarterback would have had a hard time coming down with that. But, once again, we mentioned there's Damon Walker right where the ball is. I think there's a magnet in that ball and a piece of steel or something. There's something there that's attracting Damon to that ball tonight because everywhere that ball is, Damon is. You know, and it's uh, unbelievable. He's just a great job by Damon tonight. He's, he definitely earns a rest tonight and a bye week well-deserved for Damon. Yeah, that's for sure. The guys are going to enjoy this week off. And uh, with a comfortable win like this, I'm, I haven't heard anything from the coaches, but I wouldn't be surprised if their practice was not needed this week. 
Wednesday night. Thank you, Charles Adams, the president of the Green Jackets, saying there will be a Wednesday practice. Hmm, interesting. So we're back. Power final. He's motoring. He's trying. Oh, picked off. Picked off, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Carafano throws on the run, and Carafano was running as fast as he possibly could. Unbelievable. Now, of course, and on that interception <laughs> is our man of the night, number 25, Damon Walker. Great job, Damon. You almost have to look at your roster and say, now, wait a minute. It can't be him again. It's got to be 24. It's got to be something else. No, it is Damon Walker. He is everywhere, and I believe the way this defense runs, he almost has carte blanche. Yeah, to, you know, I, I don't think I've ever ca called or recalled calling out a particular player as much as we have Damon tonight on, on one side of the ball or the other. Uh, just everywhere on every play on defense. It's been an, an unbelievable night for Damon. Well, if you were to give a game ball, right now you'd have to give it to Damon. There's no question about it. Big Tony Green in at quarterback, giving Cisco a good rest. They're keeping this one on the ground, and they're going well with it. Close to a first down. We'll see where they spot it. Yes, it is, by far. Probably a good yard and a half over. Nicely done. Green Jackets knocking on the door once again. That was some hard running there by Keith Sylvester, as he always does. Runs very hard, hard up the middle, and able to gain a first down for the Jackets. If you were to uh, list the number two most improved guy on the Green Jackets offense, certainly in the skill position area, uh, I won't include the line in this, you have to put Keith Sylvester down there. Keith's having a great year as well. He's not getting the ball. Uh, playing time as much as Andre Wyatt, but when he's in there, he's really making a difference. So Wyatt and Sylvester, great to have them back. Great improvement. And then you add Damon Walker, most improved defense yeah. by far. He's well, having a great you year. You can make a case for a number of the Green Jacket players as being improved. Right. I mean, it, it's been that way across the board, and that's just what's made this season so special for them. Is there's been so many players that have made such an impact and and playing such a, above the level of play that they played in the past. And uh, it's made it great as far as depth goes and interchangeability at the positions at the play. Still on the ground, still running, clock running, 152, 151. I think the Green Jackets uh, would definitely like to bring it in one more time. Yeah, I think they want to get a touchdown here just to make a statement. But what you have is you've got interchangeability, like I mentioned, at the running back position with Wyatt and, uh, and Grimes. And then you've got interchangeability at the fullback position. You've got Sylvester who runs well. Tony runs well when he's in there. But, you know, all of that stems from the fact that you've got incredible blocking by the offensive line, the unit on the offense there. The unsung heroes are opening up holes, and, and they're just a great unit. They've been playing well, playing injury-free, and just opening up holes for whatever running back handles the ball. And you have to say, when you take a look at the Green Jackets, you've got very good talent here, but the coaching is really shining through. Here we go. Keeping it on the ground. Spin move, second, third effort. He wanted to get that one in there. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Bill, when you mention the coaching of, of the Green Jackets. The Green Jackets are, are not only a, a well-coached team, they're a disciplined team, but they're a humble team, too. And one thing that they do, because you've got players that are interchangeable, like you can put Grimes in there, and he'll, he'll rip off five to ten yards for you, but you can put Andre in there, and he'll do the same. Yep. Is you, you can have a situation where that could actually be negative because egos start to play in there, and those guys say, hey, I, look what I can do when I get the ball, but you're not seeing any of that. Every one of them is just being accepting of the time that they do get and making the most of it when they get it. And that's going to get them and put them in a position to do the things they want to do and put a ring on their fingers and put them in a championship position. Keeping it going in for a touchdown. And the Green Jackets put the icing on the cake. Kept by the quarterback, number 11, Tony Green. Tony Green. As he puts the exclamation point on, on the game, on the score, with the spike of the ball. And, uh, the, you know, you just see it from all, all facets of the team with the Jackets. And like I said, they're unselfish. They're... You know, even down to the kicking situation when they interchange Bagstad and Vinny, who are both yep. very capable. Yes. And they both accept their role and they do what they have to do when they're called on. And they all do a fine job. But you've got that interchangeability or that depth, and that gets you over the hump in many situations when you do have injuries playing there. But when you have that unselfishness and you have that team atmosphere, that's what gets you through those tough games that are down to the wire when that team unity and that team atmosphere pulls you through and you win those big games. And that's what the Jackets are in position to do uh, with the way that they've been playing. And uh, Mr. Bagstead is going to come in, try to make it 31 to 3. Kicks up. It's high enough. It's good. 31 to 3. The Green Jackets have the lead. 24 seconds remaining. And the Green Jackets, uh, in just a few seconds, will go 5 and 0 in league play. 
They're going to go 7-1 and one overall, and they have a week off next week, and then play perhaps their toughest game of the remainder of the season against Orange County on the road. All right, well, what we've seen so now, now looking at the score, this is more indicative or more indicative of what we've seen with the Jackets over the past week. But, you know, the Jackets have once again exercised another demon in Bleecker Stadium and were able to get through the Capital M Thunder, which they haven't been able to do, like you mentioned, in past games and past years. And uh, we saw them do that with uh, Orange County Bulldogs at home this year. It's put a, a dominant performance against them. So they've overcome many of these hurdles that have been put in front of them on the road to the championship thus far this year. And this was one big hurdle I know that they wanted to overcome going into the bye week with a big win here, which is what they've done. So they're going to feel good going into the bye week, and now they can start getting ready for Orange County, down in Orange County. Well put. Boy, I tell you, it, it seemed like forever getting this season started. Now all of a sudden we got three league games remaining, and if they keep winning, there will only be two playoff games, the home game, uh, hosting and then perhaps a trip to Watertown or Lake City for the championship game. Where did the season go? Kick a low one and it's fumbling all over the place and that's exactly what the Green Jackets wanted. Right now Capital Land as we're down to 18, 17 seconds they're going to have one play remaining and oh here we go. Okay we have our first real uh, flagrant foul on, on Jenkins actually was just <laughs> i wouldn't even call it a block in the back because it was well after the whistle and uh, the referees did fortunately see it and ron franklin number 78 has been trying to mix it up on several different occasions i think he's just frustrated with his game tonight and he took it out on jenkins and the referees were able to see that as the clock wound down and we have the game being over but he's definitely been ushered off to the sidelines as well as should have well, I think the Green Jackets have a lot to be proud of. They've overcome the, the bleaker jinx. Uh, they've beaten Albany. They've done it handily. And uh, they have swept all of their Empire League competition so far, with only three games remaining in the league and two left in the division. Looking like a great season for the Green Jackets, Chris. Oh, I have to agree. And we've seen another dominating performance by the Green Jackets defense. We've seen the offense that struggled a little bit, but were able to get themselves on track. And we saw an outstanding individual performance by Damon Walker. Probably the best one I've seen thus far by one particular individual on, on the Green Jackets this season. Yeah, no, no, no question. I mean, talk about totally dominant against a good team, by the way. I mean, this is, this is against a very solid competitive team on the road. And he was just everywhere, every side of the field, behind the line of scrimmage, deep no matter what. He... he <laughs> He's the player of the game, no question about it. Coach's got to be really impressed with that. Yeah, it was near flawless for him. I'm sure Damon, if Damon said, you know, if you asked him, was that a, a perfect game for you, it would be very hard for him not to say, well, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that because everything I saw, for all intents and purposes, that was a perfect game by Damon. And, and again, hats off to both teams other than the very end there. Uh, the chippiness was kept to a minimum, especially in light of the history between these two clubs. Uh, Albany's got a good football team, a solid defense, and uh, if they just get their quarterbacks up one more notch, these guys are going to get a little bit more experience and uh, have a lot of confidence in playing in this level of ball. It's going to be a good offense. Yeah, I mean, according to past, uh, if you look at past games between the two, this was about the cleanest game I think I've seen between yeah. the two teams and all the games that I've seen, and which is nice to see because we've seen so many games before that have been a little bit, uh, like, you call, like you say, chippy. Yep. And um, we didn't see any of that tonight. We saw a relatively clean game until the very end there. But uh, two teams playing hard, and uh, the Jackets were able to just do what they needed to do and put things together and have a very, very nice win, 31-3. to That's like the score that, we, that we've seen in the past weeks. And um, actually a little bit surprising to me that the spread was as big as it was. I expected a closer game. Well, certainly when you play your two best teams in your division, Orange County and Albany, and you only give up three to Orange County and three and 13 to Albany, respectively, in those two games, Seven against Scranton, three against Long Island, the Binghamton replacement, seven against Montreal, your crossover road game. That is absolutely awesome. And that shows that your defense has got to be the best that it's probably ever been. Oh, yeah. I mean, because not only are they holding the opposing offenses to no, to no point or to very few points, but uh, in return, <laughs> they're, they're forcing turnovers. But not only forcing the turnovers, they're taking the turnovers back for scores themselves on the offensive side. I mean, getting offensive points on the board on the board for the Jackets. So, uh, you know, the, they're, they're holding the opponents to, to no points, but they're scoring points on defense. And, and so, I mean, to, uh, for a defensive unit, you I mean, that's way more than you could possibly ask of them. You want them to try to shut a team down, but, but to force turnovers and actually turn them into points, 
That's unheard of. Let's, uh, let's take a quick rundown right here of our sponsors uh, as we get ready to sign off the air. First of all, I want to thank Access Technology and Luzerne WebWorks. Everything you need for computers in your business, helping you help yourself at 654-5444. And sponsoring the linebackers, the UPS store, mailboxes, etc. is now the UPS store in the Hannaford Plaza at 175 Broad Street in Glens Falls. The running back, sponsored by Luis's Italian Bistro. Homemade Italian favorites, great food, great prices. South Glens Falls, 745-5055. And the quarterback position this evening, sponsored by the Post Star, reaching 100,000 readers every day from the Capital District to the Adirondacks. And all footballs this season for the home games now. Don't want Punk and Moe to get worried. Just for the home games, done by the Pro and Mo Sports Shop, your preferred supplier of awards, plaques, and trophies for 27 years, 151 Broadway in Fort Edward. Folks, uh, Green Jackets with another win. You joining? You got one more. I've right? got one. Yes, more. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Want to recognize every one of them because we thank you. Know, we, we thank them very much for the sponsorship. And that would be the wide receivers and tight ends who are sponsored by McCann's Pharmacy, your hometown full service pharmacy on the park in Hudson Falls. Free delivery seven days a week. And that wraps it up for me. Yeah, that wraps it up. And boy, I'll tell you, it wraps it up for the Green Jackets. Another impressive win. This one on the road at Bleecker, the first Bleecker win in many a moon. The Green Jackets now 5-0 in league play, 7-1 overall. Have next week off. Following week, it's on to Monroe, New York, Orange County, and a very tough game. Uh, Green Jackets, of course, won the home game 35-3, hoping to just come away with a one-point win at Monroe, and, man, that would really break out the champagne. Their biggest test thus far this year will come next week, or two weeks from this tonight, this evening. Well, Chris Drennan, I want to thank you very much for everything, as always, my friend. I want to thank you, too, Bill. And, uh, again, Sandra Aubin, Charles Adams, we thank them for all the great work that make these telecasts possible. And, folks, thank you so much for watching. Jim Willig, hope you're feeling better, brother. Take care, folks. Again, the final score from Bleecker Stadium, the Green Jackets 31, the Capital Land Thunder 3. For Chris Drennan, I'm Bill Callahan. Have a good evening. <laughs>